Hey guys, and welcome back to Sasquatch Theory. In this interview, I get in contact with Wendy from North Carolina. She has been experiencing Bigfoot activity at her mother's house, which this is a place that she grew up at and is very familiar with. Wendy and her mother began to notice a strange activity taking place on the property. When visiting her mother's place, she would notice new structures and always get the feeling that something is watching her. After years of finding strange broken trees on the property, Wendy and her mother decided they would start gifting to see what was leaving all the strange sign. After time and patience, Wendy and her mother had finally somehow built a relationship with the Sasquatch and the activity began to increase over time. I find this interesting because a person often gets introduced into the world of Bigfoot when they find some type of odd structure in the woods or experience some activity. Once a person acknowledges the fact that these creatures exist and have had their own experiences, there's no turning back. You can't erase the truth and that is why people are so adamant about their existence. What people have to understand is once a person fully believes, there's no amount of ridicule or telling them they saw something else that will make them think otherwise. A person may decide to stop talking about it due to pressure, but ultimately, they know. In this video, you will get to hear Wendy's experiences and see the photographs that she has shared from her family's property. Wendy and I have since kept in contact and often share photos of new structures that pop up in each other's areas. In this interview, we will hear the more and gentle kind side of the Sasquatch as they are often portrayed as dangerous creatures. Although many stories are not positive in any way and have scared many people out of the forest, there are those who experience good with these creatures and have never had a bad run-in. With that being said, anything is possible and I think it is important to always keep everyone's encounters and experiences in mind when interacting with the Bigfoot. Wendy's daughter Bree has also created an awesome Sasquatch Theory logo for a t-shirt design. It turned out very well and Bree is super talented at what she does. She also created the thumbnail art in the video description. Help support the video by purchasing a t-shirt and be sure to tell Bree thank you for the design. I certainly appreciate Wendy and Bree's support with the channel. This is my first North Carolina story and I hope to receive many more. If you have had a Bigfoot encounter and want to be on the show, please email me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. If you enjoy this type of content, please like and subscribe and be sure to hit the bell notification to stay up to date with all my future videos. All right, everyone, let's dive into this next Bigfoot story from North Carolina. All right, Wendy, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. I appreciate you being on the show. We've been talking for a while, and I'm glad to finally have you on. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So Tell my been, story. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And you've been having activity in North Carolina, correct? Yes, central. Okay, okay so the central area. And yes. this has been happening on your mother's property, correct? Yes. Okay. Well, for quite a you, while. Okay. Can you kind of tell us how you started noticing the activity and what happened in the very beginning all the way up until now? Well, uh, I grew up in this small town and we always noticed that something in the woods. My dad had actually cut a trail through there so we could walk through there, walk our dogs and stuff like that. And there was always something there. And then one day, I was just when I was younger, I was walking through the woods with my dog and I just felt something. It was parallel in me and it would stop when I would stop. And when I would start walking, it would walk. And my dog was a big dog. and She's never scared of anything. And she was scared to death. She was ready to get out of there. So that was the first thing, you know, and then other things. My mom had a horse. He never would go down into the corner of the pasture. He would uh, always you know, you try to call him down there, didn't matter, he's not going to go over there. So it's just different things, and then just recently, you know, I just decided, I've been watching a lot of Bigfoot stuff, and I always knew something was down there, and I kept thinking, maybe it's Bigfoot. You know, I mean, small town, but you never know. We're surrounded by water all around, so, you know, there's a possibility. 
So one day, this was uh, last spring when it started, mm. um, we walked down in the back and down the trail and started seeing signs, arches, X's, just lots of things. And so I kept telling my mama, I really think they're here. You know, you just feel something, you know, something that, you know, is there. So, um, mm. so it started from there. And can you, so, um, can you describe the structures that you found? I know you sent me pictures of them uh-huh. and the photos are amazing. I mean, uh-huh. I, b- I believe it to be Sasquatch sign. Well, some of the structures are like arches, a lot of arches, some arches over the pathway. Um, you have to, um, also it's kind of like a star structure that's like, they're all intertwined together. It kind of looks like a star. Mm. Um, the biggest one that I have found that really intrigues me the most is the one that I sent you a picture of that's in the path mm-hmm. that they had laid out two parallel, then across that two more. And then they had like this stick that had like a, a V on it. Now yeah. I've tried to, I've tried to look up the, you know, the Y symbol and stuff. And a lot of people, one girl on another show had said something about that. The Y represented friendship. So I don't know. Which structure do you get the most, would you say? The arches? The arches with uh, sticks over across them, trying to hold them down. Okay. And I also wanted to mention that on in my area, I find the same things as you, as far as, like, the structures and, you know, like, X's and stuff like that. I mean, they may not be identical, but there's certain similarities. Would you agree with that? Yes. They're very sim- you know, similar to ours. Yours are probably a little bit bigger than ours, more massive. Ours are not as, uh, but then again, we don't have like really, really big trees here. I mean, we have pine trees and oak trees and stuff like that, but, you know, they're simpler structures. Mm-hmm. And which that's, makes where, me think, that's where you're finding the structures that is in the pine forest, right? No, actually, no. Actually, there's, um, beside my mom's house, there's this little area pretty big area it's all pine trees they just were small and they just grew up and but don't see a lot there they hide there and they watch us from there but i've never gone into the pine area to see any structures or anything like that they do use the um the pine branches they'll i've seen them all in the path where they drop them where they're like building their beds or something like that but Mm we're we can only go so far back because they just, I don't know, you just get this feeling they don't want you to go, but so far. Right. It's kind of weird, but, you know, it's like an instinct kind of thing. Yeah. So after you started discovering the structures, what'd you do from there? We started leaving uh, food out, like a gifting area. So we went down one day to try to pick out an area to start leaving food. And um, we started leaving simple things at first, like apples um just different you know small things and so we would wait maybe two or three days and we'd go down and the stuff would be gone so Mm -hmm. then we started using other things like peanut butter and we had a bucket that we put this stuff in so i figured well it's going to have to be something big that can actually reach in the bucket and pick a heavy peanut butter jar out to get it out because there's nothing in our area Bears are very, very rare around where we live. Um, but we do have like raccoon, possum, stuff like that. But still, there's nothing any, you know, big enough to go in the bucket and grab it out. So we took this stuff down with more apples. They don't seem to like grapes too much in my area. I don't know why. They just throw them out of the bucket. They don't like them. Um, let's see. Peanuts. So right now you're testing your theory. Like, you believe yes. that. There could be Sasquatches in there, and you're gifting them and leaving them food just to see what happens. Exactly. Because at this point, we don't really know if it's them or there's another animal or what. So um, I took a bucket and I tied it. The area where we leave stuff is, it's like a big, this tree has like this big arch that goes over. And so I took um, some bailing string, which is pretty strong, and I tied the bucket up off of the ground, but low enough where something small can't get in it, it would have a really hard time getting out of it. So I figured, okay, this is a good test right here. So we leave the peanut butter, and so we 
wait another two or three days because I work. I'm a nurse, so I have you know I can't go every day to my mom's. Um, so we would wait a couple of days, and when I was off, I would go over there, and so we'd walk down because I did not want my mom. You know, she's 78, so I don't want her walking down there by herself because we do have coyote and foxes and stuff like that around where she lives. Mm. So we went down and the peanut butter jar was out of the bucket and the lid was off of it. We didn't want to put the lid too tight at first so they could learn how to take the lid off. But they did take the lid off and the jar actually was gone. So we were real excited because we're like, okay, it's got to be, it's got to be them. I mean, there's nothing that can reach in the bucket unless there's a homeless person living in my mom's woods or something like that. That's the only way we knew that that's, that was them. It had to be them. Um, mm-hmm. They did not make any noises. Every time I would leave something, though, I would knock on the tree, you know, just to let them know, sort of kind of a communication thing where they knew we were back there and that we, that we left food for them. And my mom can whistle really, really well. And so I started getting her. I said, just whistle so they'll know that, you know, we're here and it's us. So we started this like routine where we go back every maybe, I don't know, every four or five days. We didn't want to impose on them and make it seem like we were intruding on them. Um, You know, it's because this is their house, you know, and it's like walking into somebody's home you know, when they're not there and then they, you know what I mean? So we wanted to give them privacy and we didn't want to um, run them off either where they felt insecure about being in our area. Um, so we did this for a while. Um, I wouldn't see a lot of new structures, but it's almost like when we kept thinking, okay, well, maybe they're not here. Something would pop up. Like it's like you read your mind, like they know you're doubting them being there. So that's when we went down one day and we saw the structure that was in the path. I walked that path every other day. I know what's down there. And they had built a structure in the path. And I looked at my mom and she, her eyes were so big and we couldn't believe it that they actually built a structure right there in the path. Still don't know to this day what it represents, what it means. I've talked to a couple of people and they think that it could possibly be um, like a marker for the younger ones that they can't go any further than that. Um, it could be a marker just letting us know that, you know, yes, we're here. Uh, you just don't ever know. And we have gotten like, uh, you know, stick uh, messages that they've like broken the sticks and they've actually been um, placed. I mean, you know that it's not going to fall from the tree and you got seven pieces of stick that are laid out in one area where you know nothing's been there before and they lay this stuff out. Yeah. I've taken pictures of that. I've sent those to you too Mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. It seems like if they were trying to communicate, it would be most likely with the humans because if they were going to leave a sign, it would be in the forest, you know, not right right in the middle of a human path. So I feel like it's directed towards you and your mom. Yes, we do. We're the only ones that go down there. Um, you know, my nephew thinks we're crazy and that there there are no big foot around here. It's probably a bear. And we know there's no bear. Never in the 20 some years that I was raised there, never saw a bear on the property ever. Yeah. So I know it has to be them. And I think they've been back there for a long time. It's just that when my dad got really sick, he had lung cancer. Um, my parents moved their house across the street. My dad had a lot. Of, he has a lot of property. So he moved it back to that area where <laughs> he had made the path. And, of course, we have a you know fence up and everything where we had my because my mom at the time, she still had horses and stuff. And so and then one day it's like my niece had come over and she was trying to get um, my mom's horse to go to that corner. And my mom kept telling her he's not going to go over there. And time they got right to the spot, he he just bolted and turned around and ran back to the barn. So that's another thing. And animals, you can really read off of them more. You know, they have more sense, you know, their sense of smell, hearing, everything is, you know, it's like he knew something was back there. So I was like, oh, "Mm." yeah, for sure. Especially horses or dogs. They know. Yep, they do. You know, just like with my dog that day was, you know, petrified. And I'm like, man, she's never been like that, you know, because it's a Rockweiler and they're big dogs. And so um, can you describe the activity that you're experiencing while you're finding the structures i mean are you hearing like sticks break or anything Um, going on while you're going 
back in there other than a feeling? You know, the first year, last year, we didn't really get a lot of, like, no communication as far as them. Occasionally, we would hear, like, wood knocks, but they would be kind of far in the back. So, that's why I know that they live, like, further deeper into the woods. Mm -hmm. And um, I think they, ours do migrate. They're not here in the wintertime. They leave around October, and then they usually come back about April. You know, there's a big question about, you know, a lot of people say, oh, no, they don't migrate. And I'm not saying all of them do. There's some that probably stay on the property they're at for, you know, for years. But ours do migrate. I think it's a smaller group. So I think that in the winter they meet up with a larger group. Um, and then ours come back in the spring. Yeah, my mom and I put all this. Yeah, my mom and I put all this stuff together, you know. But it, it takes a mm -hmm. while because they're very, very cautious of humans. I mean, they're just they don't want to have anything to do with us really um, until you start making a connection with them. You know, like I said, they started out they wouldn't really communicate, but they knew. It's kind of like they knew that we knew they were there, <laughs> kind of like an understanding. But um, they would not communicate. Um, now the first year. My mom was having a lot of issues with coyote. It got to the point where she couldn't even go outside. She was scared to take her little dogs out. And, you know, like I said, my mom is older. So, you know, I didn't like that. You know, they could attack her very easily and, you know, do some major damage if not kill her. And so she was getting very frustrated um, about that. And we, uh, it was July 4th. And my mom was sitting out on the back. And this is the first time a coyote actually had rushed the fence at my mom's dog. And she went running over there with a whistle because people told him, you know, make a lot of noise. and They'll run away. But this one was not going to run away. He was very aggressive. And so my mom grabbed her dogs and went back in the house. And then the next day, never saw another coyote from that day after. So we think they were watching what was going on. And they knew the coyote was of danger to my mom. And so we think that the Bigfoot got rid of the coyote. Yeah, it's very possible. I, I hear from people, you know, they have like their dogs eaten, you know, by the by Bigfoot, they claim. And, mm -hmm. you know, I've had dogs go missing in this area, too. But I think it's possible that they might like to eat dogs because there's coyotes in the forest. And mm -hmm. that could be on the menu. I wouldn't be surprised because nobody really knows. The only way we know certain things they like is by them taking it. Um, but there are certain things they don't like. They don't like oranges. Don't know why. They have no use for those. And they do not like uh, grapes. <laughs> yeah. But pretty much everything else, you can, you can, it's like a test with them. You know, you take stuff, they'll take it or they won't take it. Majority of the stuff they do take you know as mm -hmm. far as you know and my mom she loves animals and she's always you know let's get them this and that and just, you know we tried a stuffed animal thing and it, i actually ordered one off of amazon it's like a it looks just like a bigfoot so it was at the end of the year the first year mm -hmm. what happened with that they took it and a blanket they took both of them because we we went back there after about two days we we're really curious to see whether they took the blanket and the uh, stuffed animal and i had put it pretty high up in the tree where it'd be hard for a coyote or anything else to get it out of the tree so we went back the first two days it was still there and i'm thinking my mom was like real upset and i'm like don't be upset i said you gotta understand they don't think like we do you gotta think like them they're animal i mean they're half human i think they're very highly intelligent they may not really know what that is or what it's for, you know. So maybe we should explain to them when we're out there, you know, what it is. So my mom would tell them, you know, what it is. And we went back two days after that and the stuff was gone. They took both of them. That's and I haven't cool. seen it yet. I haven't seen it anywhere because I travel kind of like in the distance into the woods to see if maybe they just dragged it off and they just, you know, didn't really want it. Can't find it anywhere. Stuffed animal either. Okay. Can you, um, they like can, glitter balls too. Could you describe the gifting process? Like how often do you gift? Um, and how often do you get responses back from the Bigfoots? Okay. The first year we got no responses at all, except for just new structures to let us know that, you know, they got, they, you know, got the gifts. 
Um, mm-hmm. Very quiet the first year. I guess they were just trying to size us up and see if we were really, you know, trying to, you know, do any intentional harm to them or, you know, call somebody in. But we've never put up trail cams. I've, I've always been afraid to do that. But the gifting process, we go like we try to do it at least once a week. You know, we, mm-hmm. you should establish a pattern so they kind of know when you're going to bring stuff. Now, I've heard from other people that once you start the gifting process, that if you miss it and they know they watch and that if you miss a day that they will let you know, you know, they'll do something, you know, not aggressively toward us, but they, they'll, I think they do get angry, you know, and get mad, you know, about things. I think they're like, like kids in a way, you know, you know, like, shut, they didn't bring us anything today. They're supposed to bring us stuff today, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, um, no, just once a week, once a week, we would take stuff down. And then this is the first year because, again, we're not getting any communication from them except for just new structures we would find um, down the path and stuff like that. Um, the second year is where we, this year is where we got lots of activity and lots of things happened. Um, but I will say at the end of the first year, my mom is just like wanting to see one so bad. Mm-hmm. So that so, day. hmm at this point, you're are you gifting every day though? No, 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 no. Once a so week. You're still doing it once a week. No, we do it more than once a week now. We do it like uh, maybe every three days, three or four okay. days. Okay. My mom right. has. We, we made a new gifting area that's closer to the house, but it's still inside the woods where they're covered, because my mom felt like that if it was too far out, that we'd be trapping them and trying to catch them. So we put it so, a little bit in the woods. At this point, you're trying to build their trust, basically. Yes. And have you ever tried to trick them? No, never. Never? You never try to set up a trail camera or no. just something to get evidence? Okay. No, I have not. I'm, I'm afraid to do it right now because I feel like it would just throw the complete trust thing out the window. All Everything we've mm. worked so hard for, all it takes is to put up one camera and they'll, they'll leave. I think they would leave because they feel in their mind that we're trying to trap them. Yeah, I agree. So, so do you think that's the key to getting the activity and getting them to come up to the gift basket and yep. eat? Okay. Yes. In my opinion, yes, because I feel like they have built a trust with us and they know at this point that we're not going to do anything to harm them or, you know, try to trap them and get pictures of them. Um, they're pretty smart. I mean, you know, they watch us all day, you know, out in the pines. Um, they do now. You know, at first, I don't know how much they watch my mom's house, but they watched it enough that they knew that coyote was really upsetting my mother to the point that they got rid of it. Yeah. And that's just strange, you know, that. It's like our, my mom calls them our uh, property watchdogs. <laughs> yeah. Because they're always constantly looking out for things. You know, like they know my vehicle when it comes. Um, just different things. They know when I'm there, you know, because um, they know when they see me, okay, they're going to get something to eat most of the time. So, they, you know, kind of put that into, okay, there's the red car. So that's, you know, that's Wendy. She's coming to bring us food. <laughs> Yeah. It's kind of funny. Oh, yeah, for sure. But you do have to have a a, a kind of a, a it's a respect thing, too, between us and them. I mean, you have to respect their privacy just like we would want, you know, not to be invaded by other people just sitting there watching us and stuff, you know. So it's a mutual thing that you start having with them. And I don't think there no matter no amount of money could make me turn them in and and just get famous just because you know they're there i would never do that yeah because you know when you come to this point in such a communication level with them that you know they understand you they they know who you are they you know it's like they respect you we respect them kind of thing yeah that makes sense yeah, and I do think that the alpha male and the females, the the older ones, I don't think they come up to the house. And they may come up at night and stuff like that now, but 
four, it's always, we're, we're interacting with juveniles. They're not the big ones at all. I think they stay in the back. They don't come up close to the front. We just figured that out this year. Okay. Yeah. And if, um, if you could just tell us more about okay. the experiences you've I had. I got lots. <laughs> yeah. I, I know you do. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, we could start with this year because there's a lot of things that happened this year. Um, like I said, when we would go to the gifting area, we would always I'd do a knock and my mom would whistle. Well, this year they've started whistling back and they sound just like my mom. I mean, a single whistle. And there's two of them. We know there's two of them out there. Um, the oldest one we call Kong and he's pretty big. My mom actually saw him at the end of the year last year. Um, she said when she was coming home down her path, he was at the end where the woods are and she's, he had pushed a bush down so, she, so she could see him. He, it's almost like he wanted her to see him. You know, it's like all our struggles the whole, uh, you know, last year of, you know, giving them food and trying to communicate with them. It's almost like he was saying, here I am. You're right. We do exist, you know? And, um, he said he wouldn't move at all. She just stopped her Jeep and she just stared like am i seeing what i think i'm seeing you know like most people do they're like your brain can't really wrap around the whole actual thing of seeing one you know and my mom described things very big broad shoulder doesn't have really of a you know much of a neck said his head was not as pointed as some people talk about um but she said he was just so dark she couldn't really see any features on him um except that he was really just just look like a, a linebacker he was so big mm -hmm. and then when she went in and she parked her jeep she kind of walked back out to look over there she said i swear I, i'm gonna find out if if i saw what i saw nothing was there he had already left he just wow. yeah my mom still talks about that to this day so he let your mom see him pretty much yes i think they'll yeah. that's on their own i think they could show themselves at any time to us but i think it's their choice and he knew, I don't know, I have this thing about, you know, like, I'm going to be scared to death if I ever saw one because they're so big. And, you know, it would just, I think they know that we, they can feel, you know, our fear about that, about how big they are. And I don't think they really want to scare us. And I think that's how he showed himself to my mom because my mom was inside her vehicle. You know, you feel kind of safe inside something. And um, he just wanted her to see him. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, I, I bet that was intense. And I did see a smaller one the uh, first year. I think she mainly, we were on our way down to um, the Gifton area to leave food. Mm -hmm. And this is true. You know, I've heard other people on your shows talk about, you know, like with us, it has to be moving for us to even see it, you know, like a flicker. And I kept seeing this flicker my eye caught to the left. And I looked and I told my mom, I said, stop, don't move any further. And all of a sudden I saw the flickering and it came out and dodged back. But it was on all fours. It did not have a tail. It was kind of a silver color uh, mingled. Um, and then it ran straight back up to the back of the woods. Like it was super fast. I'm, I, you know, I hear people talk, you know, like they say it's like a ninja. Yeah, it's just like a ninja. They are that fast. I mean, it was unbelievable how fast they were. And my heart was just pounding. I was like, oh, my God, I can't believe I just saw what I think I saw. <laughs> yeah, they're extremely fast. Yeah, but you don't even realize how fast they are. I mean, it's just unbelievable how fast. Yeah, it makes you wonder that, like, if the people the that have the sightings of them moving, can they move even faster than that? Is that what they're doing the whole time around us? I think that uh, when they're on all fours, they can really pick up some speed pretty fast, I think, on um, just two. I think they run really fast, and then they power drive it like they just throw their hands down and do another, like, just, you know, how, like, when you hit the gas, they take their arms down. I think they just push off even, for, you know, to go faster. Yeah, they're it's solid muscle. Think. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it makes amazing you wonder how quiet doing. they are. I know. But, you know, I think, too, you know, they have very wide feet. Um, they can be silent. I don't know. You know, people talk about the spiritual end of them. I think they're kind of spiritual creatures, but I think they're they're flesh and blood. And if you shot them, they're going to bleed. Yeah, I agree. Now, do you think that they're um, like an Ice Age creature? 
that still exists or do you think it's something deeper like what Enoch talked about I don't know if you ever heard of the book of Enoch or mm-hmm. kind of like the fallen angels and giants being born from right from them breeding with women and I think that might possibly be what they are I'm not sure I mean God could have created them and put them here um, and they've just been they stay so far back away from civilization that that's why nobody hunters are the only ones that really that when you hear stories it's always most you know mostly hunters who tell the stories about spotting them you know Mm -hmm. so that's why i don't think yeah they stay far back okay and you've never experienced like orbs or any paranormal activity um no actually no okay None at all. Now you got to, I got to remind you, we don't go out at night down there. We did it one time this year and it scares pretty bad. So we went running back in the house. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's two females, you know, there's no males there. So it's kind of, you know, you don't have that extra oomph. Like, okay, I'm going to stay out here. You know? <laughs> yeah. Probably a good idea. Yeah. You know, cause you still don't know really the capability, you know, of what they can do. I mean, they could take us out like lightning. I mean, if they really wanted to kill us, they would have, I think they would have already done away with us if they felt threatened by us, but there's mm-hmm. no threat there. And they know that that we're not going to, you know, we're not going to hurt them or anything. Yeah, I agree. Um, I wanted to touch back on the, the whistling. Oh How many yeah. Time- how many times have you actually heard the whistle? Lots. Lots. Okay, so this it's a year, frequent thing. Very. They whistled a lot. Like, um, we would take food down, and we would whistle. My mom would let them know we're, we're, we're going down, and she would always she always talks to them. It's not, I really think they understand what she's saying. I mean, it, you know, you may have some viewers that say, yeah, okay, right. <laughs> I do think they understand a lot of things i think they watch us more than what people think they do there i think they're very curious with us and same with you know we are them but probably um, the body language if anything if they don't understand you know they they understand i agree communication from body language (laughs) yes i agree with that Mm -hmm. but this year has been a lot of activity um they have they whistle every time we take something down. My mom would always whistle to them. And so, and then when we got back up, we went on the back deck. They would whistle back and let us know that they got their stuff. Now, mind you, there's two of them. There's an older male, and then there's a younger one that we think is a female. Um, we call her Silver Bell because, you know, she's the one I saw last year that was running super freaking fast. And, you know, it was like, all I saw was like silver and some black and that was it it was just too fast my brain could not even hardly comprehend what i was even looking at that was that fast so we know there's two of them the juveniles that come up and so we started this whistling thing and um it's just a pattern you know every day my mama come up go out let her dogs out you know, she's standing on the deck and they would whistle at her. So they would carry on a conversation by whistling. And I sent you that audio, too, of them whistling back and forth. And they sound, my mom sounds just, they sound just like my mom's whistle. It's unbelievable how similar the two are. Yeah, it's a loud, powerful whistle for sure. Oh, yeah. My mom can really whistle very loud. Well, I mean, even the the Bigfoot. It'll get your attention. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 They they whistled so close to her um, a couple of weeks ago. They started venturing over to. Um, we have a small section of woods on the left side of her property, um, and they started going over there a lot. Um, I have to tell you that story shortly because it's pretty interesting how they learn how by watching you. They mimic a lot of things that you do. Um, but with the whistling thing, the pattern, you know, you start off with a really good pattern. You know, it's almost like you can guess exactly what's going to happen with them. Well, all of a sudden this year, um, getting close to the end of the year when they get ready to leave, they're still here. Um, they stopped whistling for like 12 days. My mom thought they had left or we were trying to figure out maybe they went out hunting somewhere further away. Um, we didn't really know. Um, but... 
I figured out that with them whistling all the time, my mom, my mom would, she started feeding them like every two days. I said, mom, you, you got, you can't do that feeding them like that, but they're, they're asking for food. And I said, I know that, but you can't just start giving to them every time they want something. They're always going to want something, you know? And so mm-hmm. all of a sudden the whistling stopped. And so we're trying to figure it out, like, why did they stop whistling? This is just so unusual. You know, I told you about it. And it's like, that's so strange that they've been doing it. And you're like, well, they can change patterns on you in a heartbeat, which they did, you know. But I think the alpha male saw what they were doing about asking for food and they got in trouble for it. You know, it's kind of like, you know, when you're younger, you get getting a lot of trouble for doing something you shouldn't have been doing, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, so they start whistling and, um, so, and we didn't leave anything down there for, you know, maybe five or six days. Then my mom said, I'm, I'm going to leave something to see if they're still here. So we left something. Came back up, went on the back porch and they whistled probably three times. Now, the only time we get a whistle from them now is if we leave food for them. It's like they've been taught that, told that you can't, don't beg for food, you know kind of thing so i think they have they have manners too you know they raise their kids you know to you don't you know do that you know kind of thing so they stop whistling and will only whistle whenever you know my mom you know when we would go and leave things down for them in the um, bucket yeah that is interesting i wish mine would whistle like that i mean i experienced Uh, it but it, uh it was three whistles and it was just one after another but they've never done it again I, you know, the thing is, you know, a lot of people say, oh, it's probably a, just a bird that lives in your area. Okay, and that's fine. We do have a bird that does whistle like this, but they also have a after call that they do after the single. They do three whistles in a row, and then they do this little chuck, chuckle-like thing at the end. They just whistle once, and you can tell where they're moving from because one minute you can hear them at the way on the other side of the pines. You can hear a faraway whistle, and then within a second, you hear another one. So it's like they're communicating to each other by whistling and given their location, I think is what they do when they use these, uh, you know, whistles is, or any type of sound. I think they're letting the other one know their location and where they're at. Yeah. And like I said, it's a, it's a pretty powerful whistle. It's loud. It'll get your attention. Very loud. Yes, it does. I mean, if I could hear them all the way on the other side of the pines, I mean, I can hear it, but it's not like super loud, but you could definitely hear it. I mean, yeah. Then they move in, and you can hear them getting closer and closer. You just can't see them though. It's just amazing how something that big can stay hitting, you know, stay hidden like that. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Well, now this year we had issues with foxes. Okay, you know, my mom kept thinking it was another coyote because it was a little bit, one of them was a little bit bigger than what a normal fox. I think uh, foxes and coyotes sometimes will interbreed with each other. Um, So again, we're having an issue this year like we did last year with a coyote. And so I went out there, you know, I'm like, mom, it's just a fox. She even got my nephew to come up. We're trying to trap it, you know, because Coyotes are pretty dangerous to open season all the time year round for them. So if you have a coyote that's on your property causing problems, you, you know, you can shoot it. So, and that is, that's the way it is in North Carolina that I'm aware of. (laughs) And uh, nobody hunts on this property, correct? No, my mom would not allow any hunting. We've had a lot of people ask to go hunting on the property, but she won't let them go hunting. Okay. Because she feeds the deer. And I said, we, you know, and I tell my mom, I said, well, you know that Bigfoot eat deer. She said, I know that, but I, you don't have to keep telling me that. <laughs> the weird I thing said, is, okay. <laughs> I wanted to mention this. It's kind of like the whole Bigfoot thing is kind of like set up to make you sound crazy. Like everything they do from yes. kind of like your where your mom lives. She lives there by herself. So mm-hmm. if she goes to tell somebody, it's going to be hard for them to to believe that or you know if you talk about the activity you you know people say well why don't you put up a trail camera well then if you put up the trail camera they're not going to be there because they're going to see it then they're they're not going to come up like they do exactly so that is true it's like everything you try to do to prove it kind of just i don't know makes it sound like i think they make you look stupid too yeah because it's like (laughs) well 
will take me there, you know, and people say, well, I took that person, but nothing happened, you know, because they'll only communicate with that one guy. But, you know, if he brings right. other people, now they're shy and they don't want to communicate. So it's exactly. like, it's all designed to make you look make crazy. You yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But. Yes, exactly. And I, like I say, I have some people that believe me. You know, the majority of people just, they smile. And you can tell they know that they're thinking you're just so, you're full of it. You know, that mm. there's, yeah, right. I think her and mom are like, you know, crazy. My nephew even thinks that we've, mm. we've lost it. But, you know, he went walking at the edge of the woods where the path starts this year. And he just stopped. And my mom's like, do you see something? He's like, it's something's different. It's just not the same. And that's because the woods are so cleared out. I mean, it's like, there's no, you know, growth there, you know, like weeds or like anything in the woods up front in the area. There's that, you know, sticks that are stacked. Uh, the, I, I, that's another thing. I don't understand the stacking of lots of limbs together and they leave them there. It's like, they don't do anything with them. So why are they doing that? Yeah. I don't know. Being a hunter, you'll know if something's different in the forest. And I think that's why you hear a lot of people say, well, I've been out there in the woods all my life and I've never seen anything. Well, when you do see something, you're going to know it because exactly. you've been out there. Exactly. I agree with that. And again, we're so focused on movement that you're not going to, if they're standing still, they could be five feet from you and you not even know it. I mean, they're yeah. that stealthy that they can blend in so well because you're not, I don't know, you're just not looking for it. They know when I go out there, I'm looking for it. My mom, she can't hear very well. <laughs> and, you know, she's like, but like this year, this is a really uh, interesting story. Um, we went walking further down the path. And I said, I just really want to see if they're like maybe building other structures further down and they're just kind of overplayed it up front. They're just not going to make any more up here. And my mom said, okay, and this is usually when we leave food, we'll, you know, kind of walk down. Um, we don't like to go too far. But one day we were walking down the path and all of a sudden, we were pretty far back there. It's about as far as I wanted to go. All of a sudden I heard this loud, like, tree, like, rubbing together. All of a sudden you heard this crash. I mean, it was super loud. And I was, there was three sticks that had freshly been broken and they were stacked right there beside the path. And I reached in my back pocket to get my phone out because I was going to take a picture. And that's when the crash happened. And I told my mom, I said, did you hear that? She's like, hear what? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You did not just hear that loud crash in the woods. I didn't hear anything, Wendy. I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm starting to say, am I freaking crazy? I know I heard that loud crash. I mean, it was so close. And that's why hairs went up on my back and I'm like, no, nah, we got to go. I think we're, we've come far enough to let us know this is too far. We, we can't go any further. So they let you know too, um, how far you should go. They're not scared of doing that at all. <laughs> yeah. So, so we turned around, went back and my mom, you know, I still even tell her today, I'm like, I cannot believe that you did not hear that loud crash. I mean, it was tremendous, like so loud. And she didn't even hear it. Now, I've heard other people tell stories like this. There'll be two or three people out together and they'll hear something that's like really loud. And one person's like, I didn't hear anything. And you're like, there's no way you could not have not heard that crash. You know, so that's yeah. that's an odd thing. Mm -hmm. I've heard happened. that a lot, too. Really? Yeah, where someone doesn't hear it, and, yeah, and another person does. Yes, it's crazy. Um, so it's, but you know, when you've been communicating for so long, you know, when I hear that crash, I'm like, okay, they don't want us to go any further because I, I think they come back every year and they, they're, uh, they have their offspring here in the spring, and then they stay here in the summer, raise them up. Because that's what I said last year. The first year was just, um, it was just Kong. He was the only one. So maybe that's why he was by himself. You know, um, he didn't really want to make a, you know, big scene because he was by, you know, that I think they're like humans too. The more they are together, the braver they are. But when they're single, they're not really going to try to draw attention to themselves, I guess you could say. Mm hmm. So no. this year, that's why it's been so different because he has his, uh, I don't know if it's a sister, nephew, whatever with him, but um, he has a sidekick with him this year. So. <laughs> yeah. and she's very mischievous, very mischievous. She interacts with us a lot more than he does. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, they've been up close to the house, so close. My mom, she can't believe how close they they come up. But they they do like light tapping on the house at night. It is true they know exactly where you sleep. Um, my mom's her tapping at her bedroom at her window um, where they tap. Um, just recently, probably a week or so ago, it's just probably eight eight o'clock at night. All of a sudden, she heard this loud bang, like right on her front door. I mean, it's, she's got like a, a screened-in door that has the metal at the bottom, and it ra- it'll rattle, like really make a lot of noise if you you know tap on it. And they tapped on it and scared my mom so bad. She's like, because she'll tell me, I always say, let me know if you hear anything, or I don't care what it is. You just you know text me, let me know, or call me, or whatever. And she texts me then, and she's like something big just hit the uh outside outside door and i'm like what she's like yes um so i was like it's like she always locks everything up so you know but if they wanted to get in the house they could get in the house that's for sure it wouldn't take much for them to get in if they wanted to yeah have they ever tried to scare you guys like slap the house pretty hard or scream no they they don't scream or, or make loud noises like that they mainly do just the whistle um they have hit the side of the house um a couple of times uh, but mainly they just do like light tapping at night they usually mm-hmm. come out maybe right before it gets dark that's when they they start coming out um and i stayed at my mom's because i was bound in term and i said okay i, I know they're out at night time so I'm going to, we're going to see. So we would sit down on the back deck and all of a sudden to the left of us, we heard this loud limb break, like very loud. And my mom's little dogs like looked, we looked and I'm like, that's, that's crazy. I'm like, that was something big that stepped on that limb. And we think they had scooted around to the front of the house and came around to the side because we we're in the back of the house. So they maneuvered themselves around the front and, um, went around the side and accidentally or on purpose stepped on a limb and made really loud noise. They've done stuff like that. Um, they've never like, I don't know. Um, they stay their distance from us for sure. They definitely do. But I think they watch us. They probably know us better than we know them. Of course, you know, they know our activity. They know what we do during the day. Um, just mm-hmm. all kinds tons of stuff that happened you know like the foxes just that you know she had a problem with that for over a month and a half and now all of a sudden they're just they just vanished just like the coyote gone you haven't seen a fox at all on my mom's property since that incident this year mm-hmm. so just they just left i don't know if they ran them off or or what they did but just all of a sudden now there there are no foxes or any anything around the area and we always know they're there in the woods because the woods you know you hear this a lot from people talk about how quiet it is it's very quiet like you can hear a pin drop it's so quiet out there when Mm -hmm. they're watching us and we always know they know when we're bringing food up um down and we don't we're not quiet we're not like trying to sneak up on them because i don't think you can sneak up on them um we just we talk normally when we're walking down there um to leave them stuff um my mom's left them like just sardines before i'm like i don't know if they're gonna they, they're gonna eat that and my mom's like yes they will they'll, they'll eat that and to be sure they they pretty much eat anything <laughs> eat anything you leave them yeah honey they love honey jelly they love grape jelly not we've given them jelly before it's you know it's just fun to us just to see whether they're going to eat something that we take them mm-hmm. down there you know um, now, what's um what i know you don't really have a goal other than you know trying to leave them food and stuff like that there's no ultimate goal but what would you do if it went past the gifting stage and they're willing to show themselves to you and communicate i mean like face to face would that yeah, freak you that. out um yeah i think at first it would kind of freak me out you know but if they would like show themselves from a distance and not be like jump out at me you, you know what i mean it's kind of like start from a distance and then move in closer so i can give my brain a chance to to take it all in you know because I, I i even though i know they're there you don't know exactly what they look like because there's so many types of them you know you don't know really their color um 
we do know finally we found out that both of them are a cinnamon kind of reddish color so we figured that's probably why they hide in the pine so well because you know they're kind of like a cinnamon color both of them mm-hmm. my mom has seen them she has this big bay window kind of like you know bouncing all over the place about stories but you know you it pops in your head and then you, you know because there's so much stuff that has happened um they went running across the front and at first my mom's got this big wind and her uh, couch sits right there almost right in front so she could see you know things that go by she you know she saw this flash go by and then all of a sudden it went back to the left toward the pines and she's like was that a deer that had to be a deer and then it just came running back across and this time she got a better look at it because she was really looking out the window they were on all fours and I asked, you know, always give me every detail. How big was it on all fours? She wasn't expecting them to be on all fours. When I've told her time and time again, they they can hunt and stuff on all fours. And she said they're like super fast, but she did. She said their hair was like six inches long. There was no tail. So we you know, rule out there. It was not a bear. We only have black bear in North Carolina. We don't have brown bear here. That I'm aware of, we don't. Okay, somebody in the comments may say something about, yeah, we have brown bear here, but I just don't think so. Um, because she said it was twice the size of a bear, of a grown bear, so it's mm-hmm. pretty big. So you estimate they were four, four to five feet off the ground on all fours. So if they stood up, you know they got to be over seven feet tall. The biggest one. Yeah. And the little one was running right beside him. She said he was half the size. So that lets me know that I, we've been right all along that there are two of them out there. Um, but, yeah, she said their hair was not the color she thought it was. Uh, we, we kept thinking they're going to be black, you know, because my mom saw the dark figure, you know, mm-hmm. standing inside the woods. But their fur could have been, you know, because they're in the shadows, it could have looked dark, you know. Color yeah, exactly. can throw you off, yeah. And especially it was late in the afternoon too, so it was kind of you know getting darker. But yeah, she said it was about. She said it didn't look matted, or she said it was kind of shiny, like you know they take care of themselves. They didn't look, you know, thrown away like you know. I've heard people saying they see you and their fur's all matted up and stuff like that. But she said their fur was, you know, like six inches long. It's kind of thick, but she said it didn't lay like flat like you know how deer you know other animals their fur just lays flat up against them because it was so long she said it kind of stood out a little bit like out from their body yeah but she said they went running by and then they came back by again and then she didn't see it anymore and i said well that's guess that's one way of them showing you to let you know that they're there you know um my mom does not make things up that's just not in her nature she's I've never known her to lie about anything. And she just kept thinking about that before she even told me. She said, I really wanted to make sure I knew what I was looking at because I'd never seen anything like that before. And so I said, well, there's there's two of them. So you saw two. Um, She said, I don't understand why they ran back. And then they automatically just turned around and came flying back across the yard over to the smaller woods. Um, We have found out recently that they've been... um, cutting the water faucet on they don't cut it off but they will cut it on my mom has this cover that she keeps over um the water faucet so they would have to have been watching her to know you have to take that off and then cut the water on they've done this probably four or five times um by doing this um we have a bird a water that's pretty big and my mom said some morning she'd go out and it's almost all gone the water out of the um, bird water yeah and so they they really enjoy it (laughs) yeah yeah i mean it's fascinating to them you know to sit there and squirt my mama said she heard something like rake across the side of the house like going where the back door is and i said are you sure maybe that might be where they cut the water they were squirting the water hose and it like kind of hit the side of the house she said because it was a different sound she had never heard it before and it just kind of like scraped and i'm like hmm and I thought, well, they they got to know how to cut the, you know, the nozzle to the end. Um, so we think this is a new fascination for them with the water hose. You know, they go over there at night and play with it. And then they, but they won't cut it off. They don't know how to put something back the way it was, the way they, you know, found it. You know, they haven't learned that yet. So mm-hmm. 
they so, um, they have learned how to do that, which is fascinating that they've had to watch my mama do it. My mom is very routine in her everyday life. So they know exactly where she's going to be at. She feeds the birds at a certain time in the day and then goes out to the front. And that's where she heard one whistle very, very loud. She said it, she had she jumped because it, it was so close to her. And she was looking into the woods and she's like, I just don't understand it, Wendy. I don't see anything. They're that still. I mean, but they've been going over there and they've been watching her. Um take the top off the uh the cover off and watch her cut the water on and they learned how to do it just by watching her yeah they had to have there's no way they could just automatically know how to turn a water hose on that's why i say they're very highly intelligent we don't i don't think we give them as much credit as they deserve as far as, far as their intelligent level they're more than just an animal they're they're almost like half human half animal i would think yeah, I agree. They're super intelligent. Yeah, and you just know these things by the things they do. I mean, they're super stealthy. I mean, you just, there's no way. We we just gave up even trying to strain my eyes to look through the, the woods at them. Um, I'm just like, you know what? If they want us to see them, they'll show themselves. I'm just not going to stress over it anymore. I know they're there. Um, they, you know, all kinds of signs that they leave. Um we do know that they have to use um, pine branches for bedding. Now, one day we went walking down the trail, and when we came back off the trail, they had laid um, a pine branch in the path. And it was fra- it had just been cut because I picked it up, and I'm like, there's, it wasn't there when we went down the path. It was this just goes to show you how quick and how quiet they are. Because we went down to the bucket. We're just kind of looking down there. They probably knew we were not paying attention up to the front. So they went running through, left the pine branch there, and then took back off. I think they do games with you, too, because they know that that pine branch, because when we picked it up, I'm like, I'm looking around, and they're probably over there just, like, laughing, saying, uh, you know, they can't find us. <laughs> yeah, very you know, possible. Yeah, I think they do. I think they enjoy playing like little games with you too, you know, trying to make you figure out where they're at, you know. Yeah, and, I think they're completely aware that humans have no idea they're mm-hmm. alive or they exist. And mm-hmm. I, I think they do like to play games with people, make them think they they're do. crazy. Yeah, well, you know, like I said, like you had said earlier, you know, you could tell people the story and People are going to say, you know, she's so full of it. There's no way that, you know, they're interacting with, you know, Bigfoot. Hey, I even questioned it myself, you know, because I'm like from a small town in North Carolina and we have Bigfoot living in our little bit of property. You know, I mean, you you question yourself. Are they really here? You know, um, absolutely. But, you know, even today, I still, you know, or leery a little bit, you know, like, well, you know, they're getting to know us really well. Um, they're whistling. Now, they did do recent, which I recorded. I happened to catch it. We were out on the back deck. They did this new whistle. And it's really different from the regular whistle, you know, with my mom. They would do, it would be like two at a time. And then the other one would whistle like that. And my mom's like, I don't know if I can do that. It's kind of, you know, a lot more rapid so she tried to keep up with them i have that on video uh, audio so you can maybe they might want to hear hear that one and i even look I, most of the time i'll go on in, in youtube and i'll look up you know birds of north carolina or whatever and they had that same whistle on there but in, each time they had a whistle they would say which bird it was well when this whistle came up and i backed it up three times i said i keep missing it there is no name for any bird for that whistle. That was odd to me. Yeah, that is odd. Yeah, so I was like, huh, maybe they just don't know. Maybe it's a new bird or whatever, but they picked up on that, um, how to do that whistle. Um, they did that only once. I haven't heard them do anything else. And then just a couple of days ago, they are talking now um, and not whistling. We think that it's like a communication between them 
and that it's so hard to describe. It's like a, I don't know. It's very deep and loud, like a yaw, but it's it's like a language. I don't know mm-hmm. that they're talking to each other. I couldn't believe it at first. I was like, and they only did it for like five seconds. You know, one would and then one would say it, and then the other would answer back, and that was it. It was like this quick little thing, you know. And I'm like, wow. Was it, was it really loud, or was it like a whisper chat? No, it was loud. It was loud. You could yeah. hear it very well. It was very loud. Yeah, and that's so why the, I couldn't believe it. Kind of like, kind of like a shock that you hear this, like yeah, you know, it's like a y'all, you know, kind of southern thing. <laughs> Mm-hmm. But it didn't say, I mean, it's kind of like that, but it just kind of like drawn out more. Like, it is very different, kind of scaring a little bit about that. Yeah. And like I told you from them. the beginning, it's it's always going to be something different. But I mean, in your case, it's kind of the same with the whistles, but they're always going to throw something different at you and keep they you have wondering. Been. They have been like constantly. I don't know if it was just they're trying to trip us up, you know, about things they do. Um, just don't I, know. I think they're teaching us things in time. Like it's a long process for us to take in the fact that they exist. So they give us little by little and we kind of have to decode those things and understand it before they just, you know, let us know everything. Does that make exactly. sense? Yes, it does. And I think that they do try to share things with you. Um, like we hadn't been out to feed them probably in like four or five days or something. And I had gone out there in the woods and I was just looking around and I, I think I sent you that picture. It was a fresh break where they had just taken the tall, like little kind of thick little tree and they just broke it off at the top of it. And I'm like, mm, I think they're mad. <laughs> and then I did find um, the other day we went out there, they had taken a peanut butter jar and they had it sitting under the tree. Now we found that we found this like kind of like uh, indented area that um, we think that looks like something's been late that sleeps there. And then there's that tree that sits behind it. So I don't know if they were just sitting under the tree and they were, there's only just a, I don't know, maybe an inch left of the peanut butter at the bottom, but you saw fingerprints that were in the bottom. And I, I, cause you know, we've never seen, they always bring them back. They do bring back the peanut butter jars with the label off and the jar is like completely cleaned out. I don't know how they get all of it out like that, but it is like clean, clean, clean. (laughs) Yeah. I, I don't know if they rinse it out in the, you know, the ponds or something, but it's always labels off of it. And the jars are always cleaned out. Now, they, they always leave the lid, which is funny. They take the lid off, and they take the peanut butter with them. And then you won't see it for probably maybe two weeks or so. And then all of a sudden, it's back at the gifting area where they drop it back off. Yep. It's just odd. I experienced the same thing with the peanut butter. And I'll put the lids on extremely tight. We do now. Lid, they leave the lids sitting there for me, and the jars are gone. And then I'll find, like, the labels on the trail, like, in the middle of the trail. Yeah, see, isn't that weird how they, there's so many of them in different locations, but they all have, like, very similar traits, like, things they do, like, peeling the label off of the pink. I mean, that must be fascinating to them to do that. Yeah. Now, we were, this was something that we had been doing. We decided we are going to, I got some of these jumbo crayons, you know, and so I would do a drawing and I'd leave it out, you know, and then the next time I would flip the page over and I'd do another drawing because we were thinking, well, maybe they'll learn how to use these and like mark on it or something, you know, try We try all kinds of stuff. You still never know. And so we did this for like four or five times. And then the next time when I went out there, the page was already turned to a clear to a blank page where they already flipped it for me to draw another uh, thing on there. So it's like they think that it's only for us to draw. And so he flipped the page and had it ready for me to go ahead and draw another uh, structure, you know, like pencil, hearts, whatever on there. That was strange. Yeah. How they do stuff like that. I mean, there's just, uh, just you know, so have, many things. I know I'm forgetting so many. Have they ever gifted done. you? Um, yes, we have gotten, um, old medicine bottles that, you know, just, you know, old stuff like that, bottles, old bottles, um, not all the time, 
but you know they're out there all the time and they're digging and finding stuff and so yeah they left us and oh two uh bottles one of them was clear and the other was like a you know see-through that tan kind of stuff mm -hmm. clear glass like that um but yeah they leave us stuff that they find that they find curious and think that you know their gifting is different from ours because you know they they don't have money they can't go to the store you know so they find things out in the woods and think okay well maybe they might like this so they leave it and you always are appreciative and thank them for whatever they leave you you know because in their eyes they're like excited because you know they're giving us something that they think we would like so you know you don't ever want to say uh, what is this, an old bottle? But to them, I mean, you know, they found that and they brought it up to give it to you. So, you know, you should accept it um, and take it. And that's what we do. We've got a collection of like little things that they've found out in the woods. And they haven't made anything a year. Some people say they've made them like these little out of vines, made like little people and stuff. And we haven't gotten anything like that. No. Nothing yeah, they've made. Yeah, they just find stuff out in the woods and they they give it to us. Yeah. But I do know one thing that they really really love is glitter balls. You know, it's the kind that have the water in it and you shake the little ball and all the glitter just they absolutely love those things. They don't stay there for you know, once they're there and they spot it, they take it. I don't know why they like the glitter balls so good, but every time I've left one, it's always gone the next day interesting yeah you know like marbles they're very particular about the color of marble i've left white marbles blue red um glittery ones they don't like white marbles they're, i've left one i don't know how long i've left it out there they just won't take it they don't they don't like the white marble and i would put another one with the white marble that marble will be gone but the white marble is still there it must be something about white they don't i don't know if they like white or or what but hmm. they will not touch the the white marble so finally i just took i just picked it up so they're not going to take it they don't want it so so they're very uh you know they'll let you know if they like something or not they're not ashamed to tell you <laughs> yeah so it sounds like you have a kind group like one that doesn't try to scare you guys you know they're not screaming if they communicate it's kind of gentle you mm -hmm. know and they, sh they show kindness yes and then there's other people that talk about groups or clans that come up to their property and they're completely, I wouldn't say evil, but um, pretty disturbing. Yeah, you know, I think they're, you know, it's just like people. There's good and bad, you know, Sasquatches. I mean, they're, you know, some that are really good and then you've got some that are bad. You know, it's yeah. just like people. And I don't I th think they're all good. Right. It's like a natural thing in this world you know most bears are going to run but you can get attacked by a bear <laughs> yes exactly and i think if you uh were to pin them uh, you know where they had no way out they're going to come out and you might definitely get hurt but i don't think they intentionally go out and seek us out you know they try to avoid us at all costs so um i've, I've you don't really hear a lot of stories about people being attacked by bigfoot um I think they mm -hmm. scared a mess out of you and run you out of their territory. So they have to be kind of vicious so you won't come back. But I don't think deep down, I don't really think that a majority of them are not evil or bad. I think a lot of them are good. Ours are good. Uh, yeah, they're mischievous. They get into things and um, they've gotten into stuff at my mom's and, you know, they get in trouble just like, you know, little kids do. They get in trouble too. We figured that out. So they do have a, uh, a set of rules that they go by just like we go by rules. They do too in their own, their own way of doing things like they did not want them begging for food, you know? And so I think he was the older alpha male was standing back watching what they were doing and was like, I don't know, we can't have this going on. So, and they just went silent for 12 days. That's a long time. Didn't hear them. My mom would go out and whistle, whistle, whistle. And that's when we put it together. They had to have gotten in trouble for begging for food. We think. Yeah. We think that because my mom would always go out there and they'd whistle and she'd say, okay, I'll bring you something in a minute. Maybe not a lot of stuff, but she would always, like, just going out there every other day, taking food to them. Yeah. And I think the alpha male 
you know, was wondering, okay, how come you're not eating your supper and you're eating all, you know, finding out that they're getting lots of food from my mother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, and so he could have stopped to it. Yeah. Well, I was going to ask you real quick, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've kind of experienced the same as me. Mm -hmm. You know, you kind of see more of a, a natural way of living with the Bigfoot mm -hmm. as if, you know, as in they're from this planet, you know, you see them eat, they, they take things, you know, as food. Yes. And you'll see evidence of them as far as the structures and you'll mm -hmm. catch glimpses of them. How do you feel not only about like skeptics that say, oh, they don't exist, but with the stories of people that say, you know, they came down from a UFO or the mind speak or, you know, there's like this leader named Czar and all the Bigfoots report to him, you know, and they're from another planet. Like, how do, how does that make you feel when you are experience, experiencing this activity on a natural level? Um, I wouldn't say natural, but um, you you know, a day to day, you, just I don't, I don't, I don't think they're from a crazy planet, you know, or anything like that. I mean, you just got to keep things simple. They may come from there, but I don't think on that level, as far as they're concerned, I look at them as an intelligent being that is, you know, very similar to us, and that they're just as smart, if not smarter, than we are. Um, but as far as them coming from a UFO, I, I haven't seen it. I'm not saying it doesn't exist and that, that they don't that you know they interact with ufos i have no idea i just know with my experience and i have not seen anything like that the veils you know people talk about um no okay. nothing yeah. nothing like out of the you know huge spiritual realm i mean i think they're spiritual creatures as in living breathing creatures and like i had said earlier if you shot them they will bleed yeah, I agree. And like I saw the juvenile and you've seen one too and they're extremely mm -hmm. fast. Very I, fast. You know, I've seen, seen an older one, you know, and they blend in very well and a lot of it doesn't make sense, but it does when you see them, you know. Right. You just, well, you, well, when you start having an experience with them, I mean, they've been hanging around and coming back, you know, they stay for like 6 months, you know, out of the year, 7 and you know, you just that's a long time, you know, that you really start Especially when they start interacting with you and they whistle and um, mm. you may not see them, but you start putting things together just like they do with us. You know, yeah. we're not watching them because we can't see them, but we know things by things we give them that they don't like or they do like. And um, you just find out a lot of things about them. Um, just yeah. the whistling itself, you know. Um, my mom said that day, the day that they stopped whistling for that 12 for that 12 day span she said she heard this whistle and it almost sounded like a panic whistle, like, a, like, you know, oh, oh crap, we're in trouble, you know, and it, it was like a, you know, fast whistle, like three or four times. My mom's like, that's different. And then we didn't hear anything for 12 days after that. So it's like she was trying to tell my mom that we got we're in trouble. We can't we can't come back right now. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, so getting back to. You know, just the weird stuff that mm -hmm. you, you hear on the Internet and people saying, oh, this is what it is and this is where they're from. And, they you don't know, know that. yeah, they're talking to them through their mind. I mean, to me, I mean, that if it, it could be possible, but it doesn't bring evidence. No, and I wanted to ask you, do, do you feel like that puts us back even if they are doing that? And they let's say they are from another planet. Do you feel like that puts us back since we are at a natural level, like you said, and we can only take things one step at a time? and do so much as humans um like how do you mean do i think that they're from another planet or how do i no, feel about people well, thinking I mean, they like, are yeah i mean like people saying you know they're coming from ufos and they're going through portals you know you've seen them move super fast you've experienced them living out in the woods and they eat physical food yeah but you, they're they're their they're physical uh, appearance is just it's unbelievable though i mean the strength and the muscle that they have, you know, yeah, they can move fast, you know, but I don't yeah. think I'd have to see it for myself to believe that the UFO theory, you know, with them, um, I, I'm not going to rule anything out. I can't, you know, that's just like somebody listening to my story and say, you know, she's, you know, I don't believe a word she's saying and that's fine. That's that, you know, 
that's their right not to believe me. But I know what I've seen, what I've heard, what I've been through for two years of things I've experienced. I know they're there. You know, mm-hmm. may not have seen them. I have seen them with my physical eye, but um, not like going to sit down at the bonfire. We're going we're gonna to talk like, okay, what do you do during the day? You know, they were great, but um, mm-hmm. the mind speaking thing, um, my thing about mind speaking is that if I could mind speak with one, I would definitely ask them questions. What does the arch mean? What does the X mean? I mean, give me simple stuff. You know, some people mm-hmm. come up with all these crazy names that they're called and and i I just i don't get it it's like why can't you ask why can't you ask them stuff that we want to know like why are they doing the arches and you you know what i mean Mm -hmm. and that's how i feel like i don't know we have cameras we we can dot like we can take notes down so i do think they have infrared ability though (laughs) yeah i feel like we're limited i guess is what what i'm saying we can only do so much so if we start saying you know right they're from other planets and this is what's going on it's really gonna i don't know i feel like it puts a damper on things just because it does we haven't even got through step one and two which is you know getting exactly. another get more clear videos and then we're exactly. already jumping into the i wouldn't say future but like you said i'm not dismissing it and like I've had this activity. People doubt me and ridicule me. So mm-hmm. they could have very well experienced that, you know, because I've experienced Bigfoot and that's weird enough. So why couldn't they experience strange? Exactly. UFOs? Exactly. That's why I say I don't downplay anything anybody says. I mean, that's their experience. And if that's what they've, you know, encountered with Bigfoot, then yeah. that's I just fine. Feel at, at this point, if you're trying to convince people, you need to. I don't know. I shouldn't exactly. say you need to bring it down a notch, but um, you can do whatever you want, but it just needs be to be simple. simple. Yeah. Exactly. Cause like the way I make my videos, it's like, I, I just have to talk really simple and make sure, you know, the message gets through. <laughs> yeah, it does. But when you start going off on uh, these side tracks about, you know, the spiritual uh, nature of them and the veils and uh, you're really sidetracking me to the point that let's keep this basic. Okay, yeah. maybe they can do all that, but I haven't seen it for myself. I just exactly. know right I'm, now they're living, breathing creatures that are very slick. They, I mean, they're very highly intelligent. They watch us. They know what's going on. And, so, you know, yeah, I mean, it is hard to get a good picture of them or anything. But I feel like that if I go to that limit to try to fool them, I, I don't think I'd ever see them again, to be honest with you. Because I don't think they want us to know but so much about them. Yeah, and I agree. Like, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out what these two sticks are in the ground. You know, that's an X. I'm not trying to jump to what planet they're from just yet. And you yeah. know, some some people may be there, and that's fine. But well, tell me though. I want to know what the X means. You know, can, yeah, can I mean, you ask them that? You know, right? I mean, if the arch is a portal, like, where's? I'm not saying where's the evidence. Like, show it to me now, dang it! But <laughs> just you know I, had, I haven't seen I it myself. <laughs> it seems more natural to me. Yeah, exactly. You know, I walked under so many arches and just recently um, they have we walked down the other day and there's there was this big arch and it's like right past the gifting area. It had been pushed down like we have to walk under it to keep going on the path. Well, the other day we went out there and it's like they 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 pushed it down and it's like, why would they do that? And then a little bit further past that, they had two long uh not branches they're pretty thick uh pine trees that they had laid down across the path now to me that's letting me know that they don't want us to go any further than that kind of yeah, thing like they're trying yeah, to tell us that you know they you could go this far but that's as far as you can go don't try to come back here anymore where we're at um i think there are things they just don't want us to know i mean and that's fine as long as they'll come up to my area and I still can, you know, interact with them. That's fine. If they don't want me back in the back, that's fine. That's why I think that we're dealing with juveniles. I don't think that my mom and I are dealing with the the bigger guys, like the alpha males and the females. I think they stay in the back. I don't think they, they may come up at night, but you don't see them out during the day. Only the juveniles, I think, are out being mischievous, getting into stuff. Yeah. Kind of Regar- thing. Regardless, they're still around. They're in the area, within the area. <laughs> Yes, they're here. Now, they, um, usually hours will leave probably the next couple of weeks. 
and you could you just know it's like a feeling that you get inside it's like a hollow emptiness that you know they're not there anymore yeah i call it winter <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah when all the leaves and you had made a statement about you know when all the leaves are gone they don't really have an uh you know area they can really hide you know very well so they have to go deeper either they're going deeper into the woods away from where people are or i think mine might be traveling up into the mountain area i live about four hours from the mountains um and like two and a half hours three hours from the beach so that's why i see it like in the best spot because you know you want to go to the mountains and go to the beach you know kind of sit right there in between like both you of got them. the east coast the midwest and the west coast yeah the mountains anyways all all yeah. in one state that's pretty neat yeah it's great i love it i love north carolina it's a great state to live in um where's the most bigfoot activity in north carolina like where have you uh found the most reports if you have I think probably up in the mountain area. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I think. I haven't done any research on that, but a lot of stories. There's a there's a lady that gave a really big story uh, about her grandfather having an interaction with Bigfoot for years and years. Um, I forgot what they called him, but um, that's that was in North Carolina. I know I've had people from North Carolina Central, the Central area, comment on some of my videos mm -hmm. that's where i am so that's where you know so you're not the only art. one experiencing this activity no no there's other people here in north carolina but i, but I, I think though the majority of the bigfoot i think are probably up around the mountain area i'm not around my area that's why i think ours when they leave they go up into the mountain area and um because you know they could go deep up in there and nobody's going to mess with them you know, they don't like hunters. And the only reason I think they don't like hunters is because they're taking away their food supply. Mm -hmm. But I think somebody made a comment one time, like, if you're going to, you know, kill deer or whatever, then give them the, you know, certain pieces of the deer. Leave it for them as a, mm -hmm. you know, they're giving back to what they took. I don't, I don't know. I've heard people say that about if you go out hunting and you know they're in your area, then to leave them something of the yeah. deer that you kill. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I believe they're aware of, you know, humans taking out too many deer out of the area, you know, kind of like a conservation thing. Like they know if, oh my gosh, people are killing way too many, you know, if this keeps happening, there's going to be hardly any. Yeah. And I th another thing that uh, you're talking about deer um, on our property that we've noticed that like when the, uh, you know, in the spring, when the, the deer start having babies fawns and stuff that i don't think they um they don't try to kill them it's like you know that's their that's their dinner ticket you know and it's like if you take the babies out or the moms i mean you're going to deplete the population even worse so i don't think that they look at them i think they're very specific about what they take down as far as food yeah they're, well, they're not going to kill a female with a baby i don't think or if it's pregnant they know they're there's they're not going to mess with it i have found like certain clans they will eat everything i mean you won't see a deer in this like a certain woods you know an area you, you went to year after year you see deer and then you experience bigfoot activity and then all of a sudden you notice there's no deer in the area and i've heard other people say that when they go to these areas there's just no wildlife but then there's certain places where the bigfoot seem to coexist with the deer and kind of have a respect for them and not just yeah, go in I and think, wipe them all out <laughs> right let's see that's what i think ours do i don't think they're just killing just to kill they they specifically kill for a reason to eat and not just because you know oh i'm gonna go out and you know take something down today you know and to show my alpha side you know <laughs> but i think yeah. that they do they they know they respect the other and that's why they're like you know they say that they're the you know watchers of the forest you know they keep eye on everything and i don't think that they don't they're not depleting the deer because they know that if they go in and they deplete all the deer then they're not gonna have anything to eat themselves so my mom and i kind of figured this is what i've noticed that you know they don't mess with the female deer uh, we have seen, seen like a couple of males you know uh, with the female and next thing you know in a week or so later you don't see that male with that other the other females so it's like they 
they know which ones to take out, you know, for lunch or dinner or whatever. Um, and they just leave the other ones alone. Like pregnant female, I don't think they mess with them. Or when yeah. they are ha- when they have a little baby. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this year, like, the activity has dropped pretty low. The Bigfoot activity, but the deer numbers are rising. But before yeah. that, the three years I was having all the experiences, I mean, there were no deer. And I mean, even the people that are skeptics around me that... They'll tell you, you know, there, there used to be deer everywhere. Now there's just nothing. It makes well, no I think sense. Over All time, the neighbors too. Yeah, but I think over time they they can deplete the population of deer if if they're not smart. You know, smart enough to know that hey, you know, she's pregnant with you know more food for me, and why am I going to take her out? You know, um, I think they got forced into this area. I feel. So. I you know. think so? Yeah. What do you mean forced in from where? Well, when I was having the major activity, like way mm-hmm. across the woods, like the deepest part that keeps leading like towards the rivers and deeper forests, like mm-hmm. for a whole year, every single day you would hear chainsawing and it was a huge pine thicket. And I heard from uh, the neighbors, they made like, they cut down like 80 acres and made a bunch of fields for the cattle, but it uh-huh. all, it all came together for me. And in my mind, obviously mm-hmm. I couldn't tell the neighbors that, but I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> you're like yeah, he's crazy. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't want to tell him why why I think all the deer are disappearing or, you know, why there's strange things going on. Yeah, because they probably wouldn't believe what you're telling them. You know. Yeah, I don't really know these people. I know them from seeing them for like two minutes or waving at them, but I don't mm-hmm. personally know them. So, just a bad way to, I don't know, introduce yourself. I think. <laughs> I will tell you something strange that did happen. You know. um yeah, I don't know what it is about graveyards with Bigfoot, but, you know, we have a small, um, it's been on the property for over a hundred years, this graveyard. And I mean, I always look at it, you know, because I'm going by there all the time and I've noticed that they keep bringing rocks and they're putting them on this one grave site and they're just like, they'll be two. And then a week later, you'll see a third rock. They're big rocks. They're not small. And they just keep stacking them like down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's very odd to me. Yeah. Don't know what it means. You know, this is the thing. These are simple things that, why are you doing that? What What does the rocks mean? Did you, you know, is it like a, I don't know, respect thing for the dead? I have no idea why they do that. Yeah. But like every two weeks, every three weeks, it's, it's very random. But, and they're, they, I don't know where in the world they're finding limestone around here either. They're bringing up these limestones and put them at the graveyard. <laughs> Maybe hmm. somebody might know about limestone with them, but, you know, because with limestone, it, it can breaks away, kind of. It's not, like, real strong rock, but it's, it may not be called limestone, but you can actually, like, write with it. Um, mm-hmm. But it's still kind of come apart, but um, it's just not a real strong rock, but I don't know where they're getting that from. I have no idea. But they bring things out to the graveyard, you know, a few things. They don't, like, hang out there or nothing, but, you know, it's, like, right there beside the pines. It's, like, when you're coming up on my mom's property, my mom's house is, like, way off the road, but, you you know, you're coming down her path, and then you just go over to the right, there's a graveyard, and then the pines kind of surround the whole thing. Um, Are they so people that lived in that area? Yes. Sure. Okay. On that yeah. Ha- uh, yeah, my mom has this old house that's been there for over 100 years, um at one time my brother was living there um but yes yeah, been there forever that that brings me back to you know way back you know when I was probably in my 20s and my um nephew's uh little boy was outside playing you know we were at the old house um and he comes running in and you know he's like they said where are you been he said I've been playing outside of the graveyard with the little boy and I'm like we don't have any kids around here. <laughs> Not any that age that their mama's going to let them, you know, come over. Uh, so I found that odd. You know, it's just like certain pieces are like falling together now that, you know, now that I know what's there, that just could have been the alpha male back there when he was little playing with my nephew's um, little boy. You know, you just don't know because... They may not, kids don't look at things as strange or a monkey or, you, you know what I mean? They're like, mm-hmm. if they can stand and walk it on two legs and they're doing things that I'm doing, they just may look different. But when you're a kid, you don't look at somebody being different than you. You know, it's just somebody to play with. Mm-hmm. I wanted to high. ask you, I wanted to ask you real quick. Mm-hmm. 
after all your experiences and everything you and your mother have encountered and seen, how has your view changed within the world? Like, how do you view things now? How has that changed? Um, not to throw everything out the window when somebody tells you something, they seen something. Don't, you know, deny, you know, or say, yeah, that there's no such thing. Because you, you don't know. You don't know what they've experienced. You don't know what they've seen. So in my eyes, I've kind of like, you know, I don't react like, oh, my, what? You saw a what? You know, because you didn't see it. You know, nobody's experienced what I've experienced. So they can't say I'm lying or and if they want to, they don't have to believe me. But just being involved, knowing that something is there just opens the door to what possibilities are out there or, you know, what other creatures are out there besides Bigfoot. Yeah, or absolutely. So, yeah, I'm a lot more open minded. Now, now, mind you, I've known about Bigfoot ever since I was a little. It goes back to the Patterson, um, you know, footage and stuff like that. So I've always been aware. It isn't something that just popped in my head, you know, one day that, OK, I think Bigfoot's on the property. I've always knew something was there. And, you know, you're always in the back of your head saying, yeah, I don't we aren't going to have big. And you go, you'd go like because of the area I'm from, you know, it's very difficult to say, you know, we've got Bigfoot here. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why I, I guess it kept pushing back in my mind because I'm like, we don't have Bigfoot. We don't have a lot of, you know, I mean, we have woods, but they're not like, you know, in Canada or Washington State. You know, that's where Bigfoot's at, you know, and that's what I always thought that there's no way that a Bigfoot could survive in our area, but they can survive. They eat other things besides meat. I mean, they eat vegetables and stuff like that too, corn um, and other stuff, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah. They raid chicken pens and they eat eggs. They love eggs. We have given them eggs. They eat the whole thing, shell and everything, <laughs> hmm. which I find odd. But yeah, I just I'm very open minded to what you know. I don't sit there and second guess somebody when they're trying to tell me a story. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, because it's, that's it's their reality. It is, you know. I mean, don't so ever how do you feel there. like I don't know if you ever seen like the the mainstream media, the news outlets talk about bigfoot and they're like ha, 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 not a chance you know and they make fun of it D- i mean coming from us don't you feel bad for them like they're missing out on something you know they're so tied into you know what's cool and what everybody else thinks i don't know for me i kind of feel bad for them like yeah they don't, know. they don't but the thing is like you have these big groups like with bigfoot you know like these uh movie you know like uh finding bigfoot thing and you know my Think my philosophy on that was okay. You're you getting a call from the state, and they have Bigfoot activity. But the problem is, you're only going there and you're staying one day. Uh, I don't think you're gonna. They're still there in that same spot. They move around. They travel. You know that's why it just always kill me when somebody would go out and they would stay in an area for maybe two or three days. Now you got to stay out there longer than that if you actually want to try to find one because they're not just all of a sudden going to come up and start interacting with you just because you know you're so into bigfoot you know how they are and how they're going to react because i don't think anybody really knows how they're going to react to anything unless they you know it takes years yeah it takes years when they're coming up to your house now if you're going to go out there and look for them it could take many years now Uh most of the time they come to us like when Mm -hmm. someone has a sighting they either messed up and you saw them or they let you see them but right Rarely, you know, do people go out there and they find it unless, you know, they're having the activity. But I mean, it does happen. People do walk out in the woods and find things. Yeah. But. Well, most most of the time it's people uh, come up on them unexpectedly. It's not like the Bigfoot's like, oh, crap, you know, I got caught. I got busted. But that's very, very rare. You're not going to you're, you're it's just you're not going to walk out in the woods and see Bigfoot, you know. Just because there's signs there, they could have moved on. They could have been in one area one season and then moved to another. You just, you know, yeah, but I think people are missing out, you know, when they want to sit there and criticize us believers, you know, that that we're full of it, that, yeah, right, it's probably a bear. Just like my nephew, it's probably a bear. No, it's not a bear. I know what bear are. I mean, I know what they do. Um, That's right. We're not, we're not just like believing like with faith, like we're believing because we've experienced it, we've seen right. it, heard it. 
Exactly. There. They've interacted with us. They've taken things. They've showed us things. They've built structures for us because we had doubt. And don't and don't get me wrong. I did have doubt, you know, because I'm like, there's no way there is Bigfoot is on my property. There's just no way. And then as day after day, year comes around and they just interact with us even more. It's just cr- it's crazy. I, I still even sit here. I, why why are, why did they choose us? Why did they choose us to interact with? And it you know makes you wonder why me? Why do I get to experience it? Which is great. It makes you feel special because they're mm-hmm. interacting with you. But what makes them choose who to interact with and who not to interact with? Right. That's what I, I want to know. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cause they've. Uh, I don't know. I feel they, special, maybe in a way, you know, because they chose us, and it's like it does make you feel, you know, kind of special that maybe, you know, because they can sense that we are uh, good people. We're not going to do anything to harm them. Um, I wouldn't do anything to betray their trust. I, I, yeah. I never could. If some big Bigfoot person came up and said, you know, I heard your story and I want to come out and check out your area, I'd have to tell them no. That you know, I just because I don't want them to um you know lose respect and trust in me that they placed in me i would feel horrible if yeah. i did that if i betrayed them and that's a betrayal you know that i don't think you could ever get back if if i did something like that to them i think they would know that you know, she sold us out for money or you know fame whatever i would never do it i just i i don't I leave it yeah. alone you know um i don't want a bunch of people coming you know going all down in the property because they're gonna know they're not stupid they're gonna know what you did you know yeah. that you betrayed them that's why i won't do game cams you know my nephew's always saying I, if you want to catch them just put out those put out trail cams everywhere i'm like yeah i've thought about that and i'm like but if i want to continue to have a relationship with them then i i can't do it i just have to go off what i what i have seen what I have experienced and go with that instead of putting out game cameras and trying to cat, you know, trying to catch them. Yeah. But I think they, they can see it. They know they, they're watching you when you're putting them up. I mean, come on. I mean, you can't be that still, you can't be that smart to know that they're not sitting there watching you the whole time and know exactly where that camera's at. And they know exactly what you're trying to do. Yeah, I agree. And if they do see the game cam, they know how far to be out where it cannot detect them at a range. Yeah, they're you never know? just going to walk straight in front of it after you no. put it out. Mm-mm, mm-mm. I don't think so. They're going to know I something's don't. off. They live there, just like your house. If something's in your house that you didn't put there, you're going to know it. Exactly. They know the forest like the back of their hand. You know, it's their home. They know anything that has changed out there, they're going to know it. Same thing like you said in your own house. You're going to know somebody moves something immediately. You're like, um, that doesn't belong there. Especially That's if it's not your property. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Me wondering who was in your house. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, who, who came in my house, you know, but. But yes, yeah, the same same with them. You respect them; they they should respect you. But if you don't have mutual respect, then th- they will, I think, would walk all over you if you didn't respect what they feel or believe in and stuff. And they don't want us going certain, you know, far back on the path. And I respect that. I'm not going to go back there, and because I'll be like, okay, they're hiding something. I got to go back there to find out what they're doing. You know, that would be wrong. I think I lost some of their respect when I pulled out um, this cheap pair of night vision binoculars I had because they were walking around the house at night and I could hear them and they're breaking limbs and stuff. And, Mm -hmm. you know, there was no wind or anything. You could hear them. I know it was them because a month before that or no, a year before that. Sorry. I shined the spotlight and I saw the whole group. I mean, (gasps) I saw them all. So oh, wow. this time, you know, I was like, oh, you know, I got to I got to get it, you know, on film because, you know, they're trusting me. They're coming up. Well, as soon as I turned that thing on, it was a cheap pair from Amazon. It's got like these two bright IR lights on the back of it. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it looks like two big red eyes. As soon as I clicked that on, I heard one get up and walk away. And it was like a bipedal lumberjack walking through the woods. It didn't run. It was just like. Mm-hmm. And then another one got up and walked off. And then another uh, one got off. And it was three, just like the whistles. But they've never done that since. 
Now I know they're there sometimes, like I can hear the owls and stuff, but they're not mm-hmm. like coming up to me and just walking around and being loud like they used to be. Or you know, now See, it's just, they're, you, they're a lot more secretive. So I wouldn't do that. You're you're doing a good thing, Wendy. Well, the thing is, too, you could take years of interaction with them and blow it in one stupid move, like you know, getting um. Me decide, okay, well, I've known them for 10 years. They know I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go set up a game cam. And you've lost all that hard work and everything that you've put into a relationship with them. And it's gone just that fast because they will pull off so quick. I don't care if they have been around you 10 years. You, all it takes is one time for them to mistrust you and they will, they'll, they'll leave, I think. Yeah. They won't yeah. trust you anymore. Oh, I agree. So I don't do the game cam and um, just do things the way we have been doing them. You know, I mean, they're they're but they have gotten a lot more um, brave and and more curious. They're coming up more, um, letting us know more things. So I think as the years are going to come by, I'm going to, you know, hopefully see more and more. Maybe that they'll even communicate as far as coming out of the trees and finally letting us stand there and talk to them that that would be amazing i'd probably pass out but (laughs) yeah you know it's just it's just weird that's like i said i still like why us why you know why did they choose us you know to interact with and stuff so you know it's a good feeling i mean you you, but you get sad though because you know it's kind of like when you have people you know family down on vacation and then, you know, it's getting closer for the time for them to leave. And, you know, you won't see them for months at a time. It's kind of like that when they're, we know they're getting ready to leave, like, within the next two weeks or so. And then, you know, we won't see them for, I don't know, maybe five, five months, five, six months, five months. And you know this because the forest just goes back to normal, just quiet. Very quiet. Well, it's, it's very quiet when they're here, but there's. But it's different. It's di- it's different. It's way different. It's an emptiness. Mm-hmm. It, you you just feel. I don't. It's hard to describe. It's just something that you feel that you know mm-hmm. that. But we always know they're going to come back. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, and we start at a certain time of the year. We start leaving stuff out, you know. And if it's not touched, we know they're not back yet. Yeah. You know, just like this year, we went down the trail to see if we saw any signs of them being back. And that's my mom spotted this uh, like broke off um, pine branch that was over to the side. So I walked over. She said, is that fresh? And I picked it up. I said, it's like they just broke it. And that's the first time we ever heard a whistle was like up over the hill. They were hiding. They were watching us. And and um, all of a sudden they just whistled so loud. And my, so my mom looked at me. She said, I think we need to go now. <laughs> Mm -hmm. she knew she knew it was them and i said yeah i I think we've gone far enough back it's like i don't know they do i'm telling you they do things to let you know certain things they may not be able to talk to you and say hey you can't come any further but they Mm -hmm. whistle they'll do something crashes whatever let you know that "Mm, that's that's far enough that's far enough you know and we respect that and we turn around and we just we don't run back my mom can't run there's no way you know but (laughs) And we, heard, we always talk about that. She said, Where are you, you going to leave me behind and one jumps out in front of us? I said, heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. I said, I'm not going to hang around. Are you crazy? I said, better to get you. You've lived a full life. I still got a long ways to go. Dag. <laughs> no, I wouldn't do that. Right. But we always joke about that all the time. You know, what, what, what will we do if one of them jumps out in front of us? And so my mom always, she said, let me go to the bathroom before we walk down there because you don't never know if they jump out in front of me. At least I won't pee all over myself. <laughs> yeah. Good it's thinking. like, yeah, I mean, it's, it's just funny. Yeah. Just some of the things. At least things you guys mom's... make um, a positive thing out of it because just with the activity that you've explained, there are many property owners and families that will take that the completely wrong way. And, you know, exactly. they, they will say that these things are you know, pestering them every day, threatening them, and they just want them gone, and they're evil, and they don't want anything to do with them. But, But I mean, that's their own choice, but I'm just saying. Right, I know, and there are people like that, but the thing is that they automatically, because there's so many people out there talk evil about them and say, you know, they're vicious, um, they're just... Nobody wants them around. (laughs) 
Right. I mean, you hear these things and that's why a lot of people are, I think they're more scared than anything. And they're like, they hear these stories about how bad they are. And so they just freak out about it. But if they haven't come up on your property and haven't destroyed anything that belongs to you, um, they, they never have destroyed anything on my mom's property ever. Yeah. They, now, they God, God bless those them. that have been terrorized. I mean, I'm not talking about Oh, yes. About yes. There are people <laughs> that have had bad experience with them. Um, I'm just talking about know, people that hear a, a wood knock or get a rock thrown at them and they take that the wrong way that they got drove out of the area, you know. I think if they right. start throwing rocks at you and stuff, I think, I don't know if that's a play for them or what it is, but. I mean, if I, I tossed a little pebble at somebody and it barely, like, missed them, I wouldn't say that's a threat. But, I mean, if a boulder comes crashing through the woods, yeah, that's different. Because, yeah. you know, like, when you're trying to hide and someone doesn't see you and you kind of toss a little pebble, you know, you're, mm-hmm. not, trying to, you're not trying to hurt them. No. There's a, there's a difference. You got you to gotta be able to understand the activity and know when to get out. And right. You, and know when they're just trying to interact or just communicating around you and letting each other know that, oh, you're in the area. Right. And, you know, the thing is, too, you go by your go by your gut. If your gut tells you to leave, you need to leave. You know, even though we've had, you know, the, uh, good experiences for two years with them. Like I said, when I heard that crash in the back, I was like, OK, you immediately know what that means, that you need to turn around. and You need to go back. Don't continue on. When they're trying to warn you, that's a warning. You know, you don't want it to come to the next step that, okay, I warned you, but you went too far. So I'm going to do this next. You know, so we never do that. We always respect them. And, you know, you, you just, it's a feeling you get. It's a gut feeling. If your hairs raise up and you know something's just not right, turn around and walk away. Yeah. Same with people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I'm around yeah. certain people, you can just yeah. tell that someone's oh. no good. Oh, yes, I can tell immediately if people are good or bad, but, you know, that's a, that's another story. But, yeah, yeah. but the, they're there, and, you know, we got about another two weeks with them probably, and um, they're getting just more brave every day. It's just getting more, uh, you know, care. I wouldn't say they're careless, but I think that they know that they're getting ready to leave, and so – they did something last year. They showed themselves, and my mom swears they're going to show themselves again. I said, well, they basically kind of already did when they ran in front of the window. I mean, they were right there in front of you, probably not more than 15 feet, you know, outside the window, you know. Mm. And, but, yeah, that's just, you know, I would like to see what they look like, you know. Um, mom, the younger ones, from a distance, so, uh, you know. I'm blind as a bat. If I don't have my glasses on, I can't see anything. There were contacts. I can't see anything. Um, and my mom can't hear. So, you know, you got the blind leading the blind out there. <laughs> we yeah. go walking out in the woods. <laughs> it's funny. But we, I mean, we enjoy it. We have a good time with it. And we always be cautious. Always, you know, we, we carry spray with us. I mean, um, we have bats. And it's not it's not really toward Bigfoot. It's mainly because of coyotes and other animals you may run into. Not, it's never been because of them. No, I don't think they would hurt us. You know, I haven't never got that feeling that they would do that to us. Mm-hmm. So what far. would you say for the families that are being terrorized by Bigfoots or unknown beings? Um, I don't really know. Um, you, you think they made the right do, choice by do. leaving? Well, do you, no. Do you think I it'll think, follow them? No, I don't know about the following thing. Yeah, you know, I kind of, yeah, I'm on the fence about that, whether they'll follow you to different areas. But um, I do think that, you know, I don't know if it was Scott Carpenter or some other Bigfoot person that said that, you know, you, they've been on, say, the property you're looking at. You want to buy this log cabin on this land. And, uh, you know, Bigfoot's been there for 500 years on that property. Okay, and then you go and you you move in, and they're like, "Wait a minute, you know this is our this is our." You know, they don't look at things the way we do. Yeah, we're like, "Well, I paid money for this. This is my land." And right. Bigfoot's like, "I've been here for five hundred years. This has been my land." You know, and I th- so I think you have to compromise with them. I mean, that that group may not want to have anything to do with you or whatever. And I think you do like peace offerings, kind of like the Indians and stuff. You know, back in the day, mm-hmm. you know, you you give them you just do peace offerings to say, okay, you know, I'll leave you alone. That's your, what, you know, 
you stay over here and I'll stay over here. You know, kind of. I think you should do that. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And I'm not saying all of them are, are, you know, there's probably some evil ones out there. Uh, don't get me wrong. I'm sure there's some some bad ones and probably some that really hate humans. And, you know, of course, in a way, I don't blame them because, you know, a lot of humans are, you know, out to get them. You know, it's all for the almighty dollar and that one, ma- one you know, one moment of fame. You know, I'm going to mm-hmm. catch me a Bigfoot and I'm going to be famous. I'm the only one who's ever brought one in a lot, you know, dead. Um, yeah. Yeah, I feel like uh, the bad ones have had a family member shot and killed. I do too. I don't, I don't think they're just bad for any reason, just because they want to be. I think they purely hate humans because obvious reasons. <laughs> well, that's just like if we're out, you know, you're walking out in the woods with your family or something. All of a sudden, one comes rushing out and 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 you know, kills your 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 wife or whatever. Do you think you're gonna, you know? love bigfoot after that no because every time you see one even though that one may be a good one you're going to relate your experience back to that bigfoot and say they're all like that that's like putting all humans in the same category saying we're all bad when we're not all bad yeah i mean maybe if it was a a normal thing and there were signs out there beware bigfoot and a family member got killed you would understand like I knew the dangers of, of being out here, you know, but yeah. exactly. You there's no information out there. So yeah. How, how else could you feel? Yeah. I mean, so that's why, yeah, it depends on the situations as far as, you know, you hear these, you know, some hunters have got some really good stories about when they, the one guy, when he was up in the tree stand and the Bigfoot just, they were at, he was at, he was watching stalk a deer or a pig. I can't remember. And he looked up and he saw him. He could smell him. And he looked up at me, so they locked eyes, and he said that was it right there. He had this moment of fear and just mm-hmm. went running out. They started paralleling him, and but they never touched him. They just were trying to run him out of the woods in that area. Yeah, I heard because, a story, of, I think it was from Ellington, Missouri. There was a bow hunter at the Current River Conservation Area, and he was talking about, you know, he was out there hunting, and he saw a Bigfoot. And, you know, he was completely hidden. And I'm, I'm sure being a hunter, he had his wind right. You know, the wind was blowing in his face. But, mm-hmm. you know, he claims this thing just looked right over at him. You know, it's like it didn't. There's no way it could have known it, he was there, you know. But somehow it knew. It does. I think they have a, a an acute sense of hearing and smell. And um, vib- ground else. vibrations. I think they feel vibrations. Um, yeah. Once they get so close to you, they're going to know you're there. I mean, maybe the only right. way they don't is like when they're super distracted. Exactly. You know? As you already said, they got to be really distracted and not paying attention that they're, that's how they're going to get busted. But how many have, how many stories you heard about Bigfoot getting like, uh oh, you know, caught? Not many. Yeah. I mean, those it's, were, that, that's how I saw them. You know, they seem to have been distracted. Like they were both like, messing with something on the ground before they stood up and moved like they were so in tune with it i don't know yeah it was just like um when you were describing the the adult uh a male that you saw and he had white down the sides you know i know back in the day you know raising animals and stuff like that if i you know if i say a black dog got you know a real bad wound and when it heals it leaves white hair in that spot i wonder if this one had been in like a fight or something but another bigfoot and he has scars and that's where the why the white hair is there because i've never seen a black and white one i mean you don't ever hear of one being black with white on it like that yeah it's, it's what do hard you think to say. about that i mean yeah it threw me off when i saw it because i didn't know they could be like mixed color like that but yeah so that kind of threw me when you said white my first thought came in my mind was i wonder if he was you know especially being male that, you know, I think they fight for dominancy, who's going to be the top male, and they get in fights and get scars and stuff. And, you know, I'm wondering if the white was maybe from mm-hmm. another attack from another Bigfoot or something. It just could curious. be, or if they're getting old. Yeah. Maybe that's just how their code is. I don't know. It threw me off, too, because I've never heard that. And I've listened to Sasquatch Chronicles way before my, you know, I've had encounters mm-hmm. or sightings. and. I've never really heard that, but after I had my sighting, you know, I started to hear people say that, kind of the same oh, yeah. things, that they had white in them, yeah, more gray. Yeah, so I asked, that's why I was wondering, like, I've never heard anybody talk about a black and white one before, but then that's when I thought, 
Hmm. That's why when I saw it, that was one of the things I really focused in on was the white, you know, because people were like, oh, Unusual. you know, how, how did the lips look like? How did the nose look like? You know, and I was staring like at how big it was, the white, you know, on it and its face as a whole, right. not just any little individual thing. But, yeah, it seemed like other than the Bigfoot, the white stripes really like threw me off. Yeah, that would throw me. And, you know, what gets me all the time, too, is people, you know, people who have encounters and say, you know, I saw him and this is what he looked like. And people are saying, well, why didn't you get a picture of him? I don't think that's the first thing on your mind, you know, when you see one that you're going to stand there long enough to, uh, you know, have that that kind of bravery and stand there and take a picture of one. You know, that's what, you know, I'm like, you don't know what you would have done if you're in that person's shoes. I know I wouldn't be able to. I wouldn't even be thinking about it. My camera would be shaking so bad because I'd be so scared, adrenaline pumping. There's no way I would have got a shot, you know, a good picture of one anyway. Yeah. that You don't think camera when you see a Bigfoot. That's the last thing you think about. But you know what? Until it's over. And then you think, oh, man, I should have got the camera or something. But Yeah, you ain't got time to think. When you see something that you've only heard about and not many people have seen, and you're actually face to face with one, and it's like you yeah. just you can't believe what you're looking at. I mean, yeah. Well, the first thing I saw when it stood up was, you know, is it going to come at me? And it's walking away, you know. So I'm not thinking yeah. camera. I'm thinking, you know, my life and exactly. is this really real? Is this exactly? Really real? And then when people do get a, a fairly good shot at one, you're always going to have your um your couch folks, you know, talking, have never stepped foot in the woods, you know, saying that's not a big foot, you know, they, they got somebody dressed up like that. So, I mean, it's dang if you do, dang if you don't. I don't care. You can have the perfect crystal clear picture and they're going to say a makeup artist did that. That's why it looks so real. It's you're, all you, designed you to make you look crazy. Losing. Exactly. So, you're not going to win, you're, you know, constantly lose on this whole issue about does Bigfoot exist, does it not exist? Well, in, in a small area where I'm from, they do exist because we don't have stuff like that in our area. We just don't have big animals. We don't have big game here. All we have is deer, you know, very rare. Do we have bear and they're usually up in the mountains. So yeah. one, one or two kind of, you know, come down, you know, out of the mountains, you know, because of food supply, I guess, but um, very rare. Do we have bear around here? Very, mm. very rare. And I think we would have already spotted it and known it was a bear. Yeah. already and we would have seen scratch marks on trees or things like that that they do i think it's crazy that people have like been put in prison for like little to no evidence against them and yeah there's all kinds of people all over the world saying this is real up to like police officers high ups in the government mm -hmm. paramedics i mean lawyers nurses i mean yeah. just the whole melting pot but, I don't think it really has a lot with, you know, what you do for a living. Yeah, I think. It, and know, it doesn't. But it, every, trust, all walks but, of life are saying that it's real. And I'm saying, like, it only right. takes a couple people to put you in behind bars for the rest of your life. But everybody's saying the same thing, whether you're exactly. in Canada or in Missouri. But it doesn't matter. Any state. doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people are. But nobody's ever going to believe you. So I don't I don't tell my story to try you know it's great if people want to believe and they should believe um don't ever you have odd activity happening on your property and you don't really know what it is go investigate try to figure out what it is i mean i would rather know than not know and continue to be scared when i'd rather face it head on and know what i'm dealing with than to ignore it and it could be nothing that i'm should be you know here you know there you are scared all this time and come to find out it's you know, it's just a big hood on your property, you know. Mm -hmm. But yeah. you know, if you don't investigate, I mean, it could be anything from a bear to whatever that comes running through your property maybe once or twice a week or not even that much. And, you know, but I don't understand why people are so scared of them. I guess it's because they're so big. I think if they were not as gigantic as they are that I don't think we'd be as scared of them. It's the size that really gets you because, you know, you're small and then you look up and you see this huge, you know, it can crush you like right there on the spot, you mm -hmm. know. Um, they, I think they're beautiful creatures and they're majestic, they but other people think they're hideous and creepy. <laughs> they can't help the way they look, you know, like I always yeah. say, it's what's inside that counts, not on the outside because 
you could be beautiful on the outside, but you'd be a rotten individual on the inside. So you kind of have to go by, you know, what they've been doing to us. We haven't had any, you know, negative anything toward them. You know, yeah. they haven't done anything to us. We haven't done anything to them. And we just keep it that way. And we don't go down there every day intruding on their territory. They need privacy just like, you know, you don't want somebody to come walking and stand in your front yard, you know, all every day either. You know what I mean? I mean, it's mm-hmm. just it's just respect. You know, we should respect other things. And that's how you're going to get respect. Yeah, I agree. You know, so and I think they're not they're not stupid at all. I mean, so many people want to they don't they they have a mind and they think ahead of time. I mean, they think about what they're going to do. You know, um they you know, they're always watching, they're on guard all the time. And see, we don't have to be that way, but with them, you know, they have to always be watching, making sure that their family is protected at all cost. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah, so I think ours ours do migrate i could be totally wrong they could just go dead silent in the winter time and i've been wrong all this time because like i say i'm not going to knock out anything because i don't know for sure that's exactly what they do they go up in the mountains but i think when you have such a small family as ours i think they meet up with other bigfoot and you know kong for one he's getting older so you know he might have a girlfriend you know you're not gonna you can't keep the population up if you don't go out and meet up with other groups yeah you know what i mean Mm -hmm. so that's what i think they they have to do that they and i think this is a small family i don't think there's the most would be a new one that this you know was born this spring this past spring and that's the newest one so it would be next year there would be three juveniles unless kong is uh gets a girlfriend and then he doesn't do the you know crazy stuff that the little ones are doing yeah you're gonna have to go buy another bear (laughs) <laughs> we're gonna have to make like build the bigfoot, bigfoot workshop <laughs> <laughs> yeah i know right no it just they like the bigfoot though i mean can you imagine my mom and i would sit there and say can you imagine what they are and they're looking at things saying that looks like me you know i bet that threw them off and they never they never thought that was yeah. that was gonna come yeah, so that's what I'm thinking because they're really smart. I said I I know they gotta know that that looks like them. I want to you know? try it. You should try it. Yeah, I did. Now I did leave a white one out. It was a Yeti that I had, and I said, okay, we're just gonna ch-. like I said, we trust different stuff all the time. Left that white one out there um, in a clear bag because we don't want to get wet. So if they don't take it, we can bring it back to the house. So. Left it out there for probably a week, and then my mom tells them, you know, tells them if you don't want the stuffed animal Wendy left you, then don't, you know, if I, if I come back tomorrow and it's still here, then I know you don't want it. So she went back the next day and it was still there, so we just brought it back to the house. So there are some things they they're not gonna they don't just take things to take them, you know, mm-hmm. but we take everything they give to us, you know, whether it's a branch they left in the path. Yeah, it's just the thought that these creatures can think this way and leave us things like it's like they're doing a pattern. They don't I think they're more selfish, <laughs> probably, you know, I, and I don't even know if I would call it selfish. They just don't think like we do. We as a human, we have to stop thinking that they're going to react to things like we we think they should react to them. You know what I mean? Like they should jump up and down because we left them, you know, a blanket. I mean, they don't even know what that is. You know, they're probably like, huh? <laughs> yeah. So you can't get mad because they don't take something you leave them. Yeah, it does kind of hurt your feelings, but then you got to realize that they may not even know what that's for. You know, we've left a brush. Now they did take the brush like immediately. That was gone. Mm-hmm. And another, my mom has left a spoon down there, left it down there for over a week. My mom was so sure they were going to take the spoon and it was left. She said, I can't believe they didn't take the spoon. I'm like, mom, do you really think they know what that's for? Well, I think they can get the peanut butter out of the jar better. I'm like, they don't think like we do. When are you going to stop doing that? They don't think the same way we do. We can't, you know, you got, it's a whole different mindset with them than it is with us. It really is. It is. They're, they're, you know they're kind of still animals they're kind of still wild i mean but they have the ability to think create make things you know interact you know mimic you know 
let's talk about that mimicking other uh animals you know mm. i mainly hear it's birds but have you ever heard of it being any other um mimic any other animals besides birds we've only heard bird sounds with ours so um owls possible dogs i don't know deer like grunts i don't know i've heard some weird things have you things that just sound off yeah or like you said yeah. like chattering you know it can sound like people i haven't heard that but i've heard it a lot from others it wasn't really like a um not like the sierra you know where they're just back and forth just chatting 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 it was so quick like like i said like five seconds one re- one said something the other responded back and that was it didn't hear it anymore and then you start questioning yourself, did i hear right i mean because they don't keep doing it and you're like maybe maybe it's just maybe i didn't hear what i thought i heard then you start questioning yourself yeah. but nothing anything i've ever heard and i know they're out there and i know all the sounds they make um they don't whoop you know like a lot of people you know you see on all these shows people going out doing that and i kind of laugh because i'm like do they not realize that not all of them do that they don't all hoop or do that whoop kind of noise i think they all have different make different sounds i don't think that that's i'm sure they can mimic people yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I think they can. I definitely think they can. Oh, but... I, I was um. Sorry to interrupt. Um. Oh no, no, you're fine. This was when I when it was the year when I'd seen them, and I was mm-hmm. here in the house, and I was watching a show on YouTube called Born and Raised. They go out and elk hunt, but they pretty much do bugle after bugle, you know, trying to call in a bull. Uh-huh. But I I had the window open, and it was in the summer, and I. I had the TV turned up really loud because I couldn't hear what they were saying because they're like whispering when they're hunting. Uh huh. When they'd go to do the elk call, it'd just be super loud. So my TV was like turned up all the way and it's a big screen. Uh-huh. So when they did that elk call, it was really loud. And I tried to turn it down when that happened when they're when they're doing that. Oh, so but, they uh, do. Well, elk I walked calls? up. The, I walked up the driveway, and you know, did my thing trying to look for them. This was right before I had the sightings, and as I was walking back. I swear, one let out a bugle, and it was just like, <laughs> you know, it was, <laughs> it was so long and drawn out, oh my and it, God, it even did scared. the chuckles. It did the chuckles at the end, like when the elk does that long, drawn out bugle, and at the end, it's just like breathing and still doing that bugle. It was just like that, and it freaked oh, wow. me out. Oh, wow. That would yeah. freak me out. That Especially, uh, we don't have any moose around here now. That is freaky. Yeah, to hear something like that. But I think, they, like you said, they change it up all the time on you. Yeah. Why do, I mean, it makes you wonder, why do they, you know, I, I guess they want to always keep you on your toes and not get comfortable with a certain way of things they do. You know, they. I think they enjoy it. I think they, they like tripping you up like that. Yeah, I believe they have a sense of humor. They'd have yeah. to. Yeah. Oh yeah, especially the the smaller ones. Yeah, they're they're like very mischievous. Um, I think the younger one gets in trouble a lot because I think if it was just her and she didn't have Kong with her, I think that um, she would probably have already been busted by us. We would have already seen her. Um, but he's taught her. I guess they send them out and they teach you. You know, the older ones teach the younger ones things. Um, you know, they learn by example. So, you know. But yeah. their whistling skills are just out of this world. I mean, it's just amazing that they, being such big animals and they can do such, you know, elegant, like, bird whistles and stuff. Yeah. No, they it, gotta be it's smart. Incredible. It's like a parrot. Like, when a parrot hears something and mm-hmm. it, like, mimics it, that's what a Bigfoot can do. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. The same thing. Yeah, you know, I've never heard them do dog calls or... Um, like I said, you know, the big ones, the whooping, never, ever have heard them whoop or anything like that. Nope. Now we have heard like snorting, which mm-hmm. is very rare, but we do hear like a, kind of like a, you know, when a horse kind of like neighs, I mean, it just with his nose and his lips, just kind of, it kind of like yeah. that. It's yeah, really loud. Too. You'll hear the snort. You'll hear mm-hmm. like a snort, and then you'll hear like that exhale, the breath, like a horse. I don't know if you've heard the same thing, but no, I, and I haven't heard the exhale, but I have heard the snort. And then you're like mm-hmm. listening, like, are they going to do it again? But it's like they only do it like one time. It's not like a big thing they do, but the whistling, they just constantly will, will whistle, answer you every time you whistle. They're going to whistle back. 
you know, birds don't do that. Every, when you whistle, they're going to whistle back. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like my mom and them carry on a conversation, you know, and it's like she'll whistle, they'll whistle. A bird normally will just fall off of that. He won't stay with that very long and he'll fall off somewhere, but they're right there on it. They'll match her for every whistle she does. They'll, you know, they'll do it back. Um, mm. And they know. And another thing, when does an animal whistle, wait and whistle when it sees you come out the door? I mean, they watch my mom. They know when she come, she's going to come out the back door to let the dogs out. And um, they start whistling to her. They let her yeah. know immediately that they're there, you know. Yeah. And she said it just got to every time she walked out, they would whistle to her every time. They were constantly right there under her watching her at all times. They watched her feed the birds. Like I said, they learned how to turn the water hose on because of her. Um, You know, they watch yeah. everything. People Everything. need to realize how intelligent they really are. Exactly. You know, they're just very smart. Very, very smart. It just amazes me every time something, you know, always new coming up with them that they're going to do. That you say, I don't ever do that. Then they do it. It's like they're they're reading your mind saying, oh, you don't think I can do that? Well, watch this. You know, and then they'll do, they'll do it. And you're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. They say they like music and stuff. Now, I've never went out, you know, and you know, play music or anything out in the woods for them. But they say that they're um, drawn in by, you know, like music and just laughter. And that kind of like draws them in to be more curious about what's going on and mm -hmm. stuff. I don't know about that because we don't, you know, we don't do that. Like, and I would think that would be something more at nighttime when they're really lively at night and not during the day. Yeah, I agree. The juveniles are active at all hours. It doesn't matter if it's early first thing in the morning, in the afternoon, um, that night. They're constantly always around. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they have been, uh, hours have been now. Um, they may alternate taking, you know, breaks and sleeping and all, but I think a majority of the time they sleep during the day. It's just so hot. I mean, but you can walk in the woods here in our area and it's, 10 degrees cooler once you hit the woods it's like psh, all of a sudden it's just like cool you know like wow this really is a lot cooler back here you know but you can't mm -hmm. like wander off the path too much and you can eat up by red bugs and ticks and everything else even though you yeah. spray you know it's like ugh. if it's we could do it with that yes it is but it's worth it i mean you know i wouldn't trade it for anything you know i just get eat up by red bugs but um mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's, it's been worth it to me and i always make sure i spray really good going down there but um but yeah that's we've had a really good experience so far and like i say they're getting ready to leave probably in the next couple of weeks probably you don't never know it just gets really quiet and the bat you know that's how we knew last year's when they didn't take anything out of the bucket we knew they had, we just we knew they were gone kind of it my mom just wanted to say well, let me leave stuff in there just to see and she did she left stuff in the bucket and we went down the next day and checked it and it was all still there so we knew they had already left because they're not going to leave anything you know in that bucket you know they're if, even if they don't like it it's coming out of the bucket and it's going to hit the ground or whatever yeah yeah it makes sense you you've mm -hmm. dealt with the activity enough to know when it's not happening exactly just so many things that happen you know it's like anytime you start questioning you know whether they're there they're always going to come up with something to let you know that yes we are here every time you have a doubt any doubt at all that you have in your brain you start thinking well maybe it's maybe it's a deer or it's a coyote but you know people will say well anything can get in that bucket i'm like no it can't it's going to get stuck in the bucket so it's going to happen if it doesn't have to turn the bucket and jump out of it you know but then my mom has a smaller one and it's on this little piece of nub that any small animal is going to knock that bucket down on the ground there's just no way and we've never found it on the ground again it goes with the heavy peanut butter jars i mean do you think a raccoon could pick that up out of a bucket as heavy as it is and then take the lid off of it i don't think they, they have fingers and stuff but i mean maybe take it out of the bucket because you know they got fingers and arms yeah, it's pretty heavy not, I mean, not twist it off but no yeah <laughs> that we twist it on pretty tight now and yeah. they'll take it off now you will see like um teeth marks like on the lid itself but i think that's where little animals have come by and they not on all of them but some of them you'll see like bite marks on it 
but you know that there's no way they could take the lid off. There's just no way. Now, if it's cracked or something like that, possibility a yeah, small open. animal opened it by cracking it loose. But uh, it's, this, it takes hands. Yeah, and what's going to eat? You know, my mom, we leave so much food. There's not one animal by itself is going to sit there and eat all of that food in that bucket. There's just no way. There's just no yeah. way. It's too much food. And it's all gone. We even walk out in the woods. They leave their trash everywhere. But they leave it, you know, you could actually tell where they walk because you'll see one you'll see uh one bag and then you walk a little bit more and you'll see another bag and it's like it's like, you know, Hansel and Gretel, you know, leaving the breadcrumbs. <laughs> yeah. Well I've you heard just about, gotta follow the trail. I know there's private researchers that have, you know, experienced that and they've went as far as you know, getting a container, putting the Snickers bars and whatever treats and gifts they got inside the container. They bury a hole about a foot deep. They put the container in there, put the flat rocks, a bunch of flat rocks that are heavy on top of the container, put the dirt uh-huh. back on there and put all the leaves back. And they come back like three days later and the Snicker bars are gone. But the container's back in the ground with the rocks on top of it and the dirt. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, you can take it further if you wanted to. And you can start because they're watching you anyway. They're watching everything you do, so they yeah. know how you're doing it. You yeah. know, like I would not have ever believed it if I hadn't believed with the with the water faucet. And that's pretty hard for an animal, any animal, to cut on. You got to have fingers and stuff to twist it and to take the bag off. That's what I'm saying. They've watched my mama do this a, a numerous of times before they decided to do it on their own. And they, they don't know how to turn it back off, though. The thing is, they know how to turn it on, but they don't know how to turn it off. Yeah. They've done that several times. But they, they just started doing that in the last month or so with the uh, water faucet. They haven't messed with that at all until now. Now, I will tell you. Did it get really hot when they did that? Was it really hot out? Like a drought or something? No, not really. This has actually been the cooler days. You know, it's, Like I said, it's only been, they've only been doing it like start about four weeks ago. They started with the water faucet, but my mom goes out every single day and she late she does it later in the afternoon so the water will be cold, and she uh, dumps the uh, water out of the bird water and then she has one of those rules those cement like bird baths and she fills it up with water clean cold water every day. So they they drink the water, all the water out of that. My mom says every time she fills it up, depends on, you know, like you said, how hot it is on a certain day, that they'll drink all of it. There won't be any left in it, or there'll just be just, you know, maybe half of it gone. Mm-hmm. And we we thought about deer, but, uh, you know, deer are not going to sit there. That thing's pretty big, and they're not going to drink all that water out of that bowl. Yeah. So... And that's one reason I know they don't eat all the deer around my mom's house because there's still, you know, active deer that are out in the back and in the front of the house. And um, so they don't just kill just to kill. I think they kill when they're, you know, they need to eat. That's pretty mm-hmm. much what I think. I don't think they're crazy animals out there just killing everything in sight and, um, you know, destroying all animals or whatever. I don't. I just don't think they're that way. Yeah, I agree. I would love to talk to one and carry on conversation with one. It'd be nice. And that's why I always do people who mind speak. Why don't they do simple things? Why do you got to go over our head and talk about all this, you know, other planets and stuff that we're from some other planet? Why don't you ask them questions about, like I've said earlier, about arches and what does that mean? You know, I want to know simple things. I don't care mm-hmm. where you came from. If you came from Mars, I don't care. I, you're living here now, and I want yeah. to know what you're doing. Well, I mean, here. we can't even figure out where we came from, so trying to figure out where they came from. I it's know. like, whoa, whoa, you just skipped a bunch of steps. And like I said, I'm not ridiculing. Oh, I know. I'm making not fun either. Of them. No, I'm just saying. Either. I just want to figure out the simple stuff because I'm a sign guy. You know, I'm not, I'm not a researcher. I just love to hunt, fish, right. you know, be out yeah. there, be out there in the forest, and I just want to know the simple things. That's me. Just give me the simple things. You know, wh- how do they build their houses? Do they stay in the same location all the time? Um, why are they communicating? Simple. <laughs> yeah. Why do they? Why do they choose certain people to communicate with and show themselves to? That's what. Those are the simple things I want to know. Don't go over my head about other stuff. I mean, that's fine if you could communicate with them in that way. 
more power to you, but I don't want to know that stuff. I want, like you said, I want to know the simple, basic things of daily life for them. Mm-hmm. What do you do during the day? I mean, what do you do at night? You know? Yeah. And if the, all those things are real, like the mind speaking things, I, you know, I'm religious or I'm a Christian and I kind of believe mm-hmm. that God cut us off from all that. We're not supposed to do that. So there are right. beings doing that. We're not supposed to go that far. Mm-mm. And I, I just want to understand it as far as how we can deal with it and how we can teach others that right. they exist. Well, my thing is, too, I mean, you could take somebody that doesn't even speak English, you know, and there are ways you can communicate with, with any anybody or anything by just activities, things they do. You know what I mean? I mean, you don't actually have to speak their language to be able to communicate with them. Yeah. You, just for simple things, you know, I mean, like I said, we found out a lot about them in two years. This year has been the most, you know, that, yes, they do get in trouble. They do get punished, I think, by the um, alphas um, when they do things they're not supposed to do. Um, we kind of thought that was funny in a way, but then we like, you know, it's kind of sad because he wouldn't. Let, I, I think he wouldn't let them come up to the to get anything for, like I said, for like 12 days. We counted every day. We didn't hear a whistle. You know, and then that yeah. one day we went down there and left something and got in the house, went back out on the deck. And probably five minutes after being out there, we heard this really strong whistle and we're, we just couldn't believe it. We were so happy, you know, like, oh, my God, they, they know we took the stuff down there and they're telling us thank you, you know, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So, yeah, they let us know when they get stuff. But now here recently, they've just gone off the rails and they're just kind of like all over the place about doing stuff every i mean they're not consistent right now about nothing <laughs> yeah and just, nothing is about them but in your situation like you guys are getting the whistles almost daily yep. yeah we were now they have started whistling but they're nowhere near what they were doing with us as far as whistling every single day you know, I'll text my mom or someone said, did they whistle today? No, they haven't. They're being so quiet, you know, and then this could go on for two or three days and then she'll hear them whistle. You mm-hmm. know, there it's not a daily, as soon as she walks out the door, she can expect them to whistle back. It's very sporadic now. She never knows now when they are going to whistle at her or whatever. And then they yeah. did that crazy whistle that I, I don't think I've, you've heard that yet with um, the different tone of whistle but there's two of them out there and they were they were chatting back and forth with each other and my mom would sporadically just jump in and try to whistle like that but it was mainly between them two that they were doing that that bird type whistle to each other because mm-hmm. one would like do three the other would answer back in two and then the, uh, the other one would say you know whistle once and so they were never consistent it's like one did three the other did three so what you know it's like a language they were like back and forth with the whistle yeah that's interesting yeah that was pretty interesting but they've only done that once we Mm -hmm. have not heard them do that again anymore we thought maybe they switch you know switched up their whistling technique but it was just a sporadic thing they just did that out of the blue just one time yeah well i think it's a a a really rare thing and Mm -hmm. you should cherish it you know not oh, very yes. many people get to experience this no, type of I activity I, on this planet. I don't know. I guess I've prayed and prayed so many, so many times about, I just, you know, want to be, you know, interact with one, take whatever I can get. That's why I say now I'll take whatever I can get. If they don't want to ever show themselves to me, that's fine. It doesn't matter. They're still there and they still communicate with us, but just in a yeah. different way. Yeah. It would, it would be nice if they come out and, you know, walked in the woods with us or whatever. That would be super cool, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. I don't see that happening anytime soon. Maybe in another two or three, maybe two years when they really, but they, every year they get a little bit trust, more trusting and more trusting, but it, it, it's it's not a fast thing. Like, you can meet somebody and you come friends with them and fast friends, get, they don't do, they're totally different in that they're very standoffish for the longest time and then they gradually move in on you. A little mm-hmm. bit at a time, a little bit at a time. So next year, hopefully I'll have a lot more uh, stories for you, a lot better ones, maybe. Yeah, you I'm know. sure you'll be back on the show just because of how much activity you have and the way you're going about it all. 
Yeah, and if anybody has any questions they want to ask me, if I can answer them, yeah, you know, be more absolutely. than absolutely more than glad to answer any questions. And I probably forgot stuff that since I hang up, I'll remember. I'll be like, oh god, I forgot to tell you know tell you about. It. It's just so much, you know, and I just something mm. pops in my mind and I tell the story about that. But yeah, um, well, yeah, the biggest things are you know about feeding traits, you know how you know how we do it, and um, it's somebody else is out there and they may have just started having activity with some, you know, some of the things that we do don't ever intrude. That's the biggest mistake you can make is you keep going back there constantly intruding on them. I don't think that's a good thing to do that. Um, if they know you daily walk, that's one thing, but just to go back there and be nosy all constantly, I don't think they would appreciate that too much. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Don't try to trick them. No, don't ever try to do that because I don't think the end result is going to be good. Yeah, They'll be gone. I think, I think it's okay to put up deer cameras because you're looking for deer sign. You know, they can see what you're tracking, what you've been looking at. Maybe you're looking at a rub and then you put up a camera, you know, there in that area. They know that type of stuff. But when you try to like sneak it in there, sneak it in the gift box right. or the gift basket, that's, that's a no-no. <laughs> yes a very big no-no so yeah i would never and they're smart they know when people are putting gang uh cams out there for you know hunting they know that i mean they know they see that but they also know the difference between you know a hunter and somebody casually trying to go out there and capture them too you know on film so you know mm -hmm. yeah they know when you're looking for them you're doing obvious knocks or i don't know you're just standing there staring looking for the activity they know yeah, and they're sitting there watching you out, you know, deep in the woods and sitting there laughing at you saying, oh, they're just being so stupid. <laughs> yeah, they yeah. probably laugh at us over a lot of stuff that we do. You know, think we're being like really smart and stuff. And they're like shaking their head going, you know, man, these humans are going to be so stupid sometimes. You know um, what I mean? Very possible. I'm sure. Yeah. They do. But, you know, I like things the way they are. And like I said, you know, maybe one day you can come out and do a documentary on our area. I just don't trust too many people, you know, coming yeah. out to the property. Yeah, I'd love to. Yeah. My mom's just really, very curious about anybody who goes out there. She doesn't want anything disturbed with them. Doesn't want them to get upset in any way. And, you know, mm -hmm. like I told her, I said, well, if they're with us, it's different. They may, they still may not do anything, which I don't think they will. You kind of have to they're very active and especially at night you may get activity at night with them you know here on you know mm -hmm. through the woods and stuff like that but as far as them getting up close on you and they may even do that i don't know you know, yeah never but it's always when you least before. expect it exactly like when you're driving down the road in a jeep you're not you're not ready for that <laughs> yeah <laughs> no you're not so um but okay. we we you know we've enjoyed our experience so far and um i'm just looking forward to next year this year's almost over so i don't think they'll be doing too much more but but getting ready to leave and then you know we just look forward to them coming back next year and be ready for them with maybe new things we've learned you know that we can do to try to communicate with them and stuff yeah and i wanted to say i appreciate you including me and in all that and I oh think yeah you've become really good friends in time and yes I don't, I think, I really trust you know, you. yeah you fell into my feed i've you know i've been <laughs> wanting to tell my story and it's just weird i've heard other people you know come on your channel and say the same thing it's just something about your channel and it just drew me in and i'm like i think this is a guy you know because you, you're so honest and so true about you know you don't interrupt you're a great interviewer and i just noticed that you know so many people want to jump in and interrupt and you just let people tell their story and you know well, i appreciate I, it i'm a sinner yeah. just like anybody else <laughs> yeah, we all are what you talking about <laughs> <laughs> yeah but also, yeah but i enjoy talking to you about it and i hope everybody absolutely. enjoys my story and and likes it either you don't you do or you don't you believe me or you don't believe me so it's not gonna make me feel bad one way or the other yeah exactly and uh, I wanted to say I really appreciate all the donations you've made towards the channel and all the support. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anytime. I will continue so to much. support you. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up. I know. Okay. I'm sure you're going to think of stuff later, but. Of course, right. always. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you for being on the show, Wendy. And if you have any questions, mm -hmm. you know my number. 
Yep. Thanks, Miguel. I appreciate you having me on, and you have a great day. Yep, not a problem. You have a good one. All right. Bye. Bye. It's very interesting to hear Wendy's experiences with the Bigfoot and how she goes about interacting with them. Gifting has been used by many people as a method to see if Bigfoot are in the area. With curiosity being a Bigfoot's number one weakness, gifting can often yield results if frequently done in the right manner. It would be best practice in an area that has Sasquatch or if you think they are coming up to your property. I don't recommend it because not all Sasquatch groups are as kind as the ones coming up to Wendy's mother's house. But, the option is there if someone feels the need to figure out what is happening around their property. Just always be aware that things may not always go the way you think or want them to go. I want to thank Wendy for being such a great guest on the channel and of course for being such a great friend. I hope you always have your head on a swivel and I have a good feeling you will be back on the show in the future. Anyways, that's all we have for today and I hope you guys have a happy Thanksgiving. Catch you guys on the next one.